What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City live watch along. Today we're going to be doing the live watch along of Manchester City's huge Premier League game against Aston Villa at the Etihad Stadium. It's very much a point of no return for Manchester City. It's uh, two consecutive Premier League games. We're not losing games, we need to start winning games, turning these one points into three points. And for Manchester City, trailing Liverpool, trailing Arsenal, we've got a worse goal difference. We need to start winning and putting some pressure onto Arsenal and onto Liverpool in the hope that they'll start to drop points and soon. And the only way that Manchester City, for me, the only way I see City winning this game uh, is through us playing a nice positive style, attacking football and scoring goals. At the moment, we've kept things nice and tight against these good teams. A point at Anfield's always a good point as far as I'm concerned. Disappointing we couldn't break open the deadlock against Arsenal at the Etihad Stadium. We need to start finding goals. We need to start winning games. Nine Premier League games. We've got to be thinking 27 points and nine wins. And we need to apply ourselves sooner rather than later, because we allow this to go on in this game against Villa and at the weekend in our away game against Crystal Palace, it may well be a point that Manchester City quite simply cannot win the Premier League. Mathematically, yes. Realistically, no. And that's what's at stake here. Manchester City need to put in a good, solid performance, scoring goals, winning this game. And for me, more so, more than anything else, today's all about Manchester City winning this game. City win this game, we're still in the title race, we're putting pressure on to Arsenal, we're putting pressure on to Liverpool. Arsenal are playing, uh, well, they're playing, what, well, they're already playing right now. Uh, they've kicked off early this evening, but Liverpool don't play until tomorrow, so we've got the chance today to go level on points with Liverpool. A very convincing win for Manchester City by five goals or more today will see us either equal or better their goal difference. So if we absolutely annihilate Aston Villa, we could go over Liverpool and just put in a little bit more pressure. And that's what City need to get right. It's something we've not really got right all season. There's been games where we've played well, we've won games. I'm yet off top of my head to think, well, I thought, you know what, this is Manchester City right at their very best. We've just not really hit our stride. We need to hit our stride this evening because if we don't, Villa, they're sitting in fourth. They're a good team with good players. They will punish Manchester City and City need to be so weary about that. City have rotated a few players, clearly thinking a huge game against Real Madrid in six days' time. We have to rotate. A chance today to do a little bit of rotation. A chance on Saturday to do a little bit more. So I'm not looking for City to go out there and win 4 5 nil. It would be great. Absolutely brilliant for us to go and do so. It's all about staying in the race. It's all about next two Premier League games. Six points. That's a must. That's what it will take to keep City interested in the Premier League. Because we know then we're in a position where we can push on for the remaining seven games. And we'll be in a better position because we'll know what's happening in the Champions League. And it's all just about keeping yourselves in contention. And once you've got a better idea, do we make it to the semi-final of the Champions League? Do we make it to the final of the FA Cup? Well, we've got three Premier League games in between them games deciding what happens. So it's all just about keeping ourselves in in contention because there will come a point in the season where Manchester City are going to have to think to themselves we need to launch a serious assault on the Premier League or if we're dropping points we launch a serious assault on the the Champions League it's getting towards that point for Manchester City the business end of the season where we need to go out there we've got a point to prove and keep ourselves in every competition so we have the best chance of success come the end of the season because at the moment we have put ourselves in a, a pretty good position we, you know we could still win the Premier League we're still in the Champions League we're in the semi-final of the FA Cup I'm not going to argue or complain with that they're the facts I'm happy with that but it can very easily go wrong very quickly and uh, Manchester City know that um, I would say out of the three competitions that were left in the Premier League causes me the most concern and the biggest headache because over the marathon season, Manchester City just seem to just be not finding themselves and dropping points when maybe they shouldn't be dropping points uh, and, and not beating any of the big sides or the good sides has also caused me a lot of concern. The only side we've beaten uh, that currently occupies in the top six right now in the Premier League 
is Manchester United and doing the double over them. Everyone else, we've just, you know, Liverpool dropped points twice against them. Uh, Arsenal lost and drawn against them. Tottenham Hotspur were dropped points against. Chelsea were dropped points against in both our home and away match. Villa that we played today, we lost at Villa Park. So City, they need to start finding the stride and quick because otherwise we're just going to find ourselves too much to do with too little time left. So very fine margin sets things up very nicely here at the Etihad Stadium for this game so before i do crack on guys with this live watch along make sure like always if you are enjoying the content please do leave a thumbs up we're aiming for 100 likes we've already made a really good start on 31 likes it means we're 69 likes away from 100 likes so any help towards that would be great also, don't forget as well to leave your thoughts in the live chat. A warm welcome to everybody that has tuned in so far. We've got Dave says, looking forward to this game on your channel, as I only have Sky and you are better than five live. This game, of course, being streamed live in the UK on TNT Sports, formerly BT Sport, uh, and is covered on the radio through five live. So, Dave, much appreciated. Thank you very much uh, for your kind comment there. Much appreciated. Adam, thanks for tuning in. Going for a 2 0 victory today for Manchester. Manchester City, good evening, Adam. Thanks for tuning in. Do get your score predictions, guys, in the live chat and where you're tuning in from. Tom as well, going for a City win, going for a 4-1 victory today for Manchester City. Fardos, thanks for tuning in. Says it's nice to see Julian Alvarez. We'll speak about the team in just one moment, but it is great to see Alvarez back in the starting 11. The Geezer Dan, thanks for tuning in. Says City to win 3-1. Got schooled at their place, but let's get revenge in style tonight. Didn't have Rodri that evening. City got played off the park by Aston Villa and Unai Emre masterclass at Villa Park I've never seen City outplayed under Pep Guardiola like we was at Villa Park we never had that midfield control Aston Villa were happy to play Man City off the park so it'll be interesting to see now what Aston Villa's approach is coming to our backyard at the Etihad Stadium Aston Villa aren't a park the bus team they're a team that like to have possession they're a team that like to attack are they going to attack Man City and we're going to see goals here? This is going to have to be very well managed from Manchester City today. I'll tell you that right now. Manchester City fan, thanks for tuning in. Going for a 0-0 at half-time. Not giving me a full-time prediction, but going with 0-0 at half-time. And uh, actually, uh, I think it'll be pretty narrow. I won't rule out a 0-0 at half-time. Uh, I am, my prediction today, going for a 1-0 victory for Manchester City. Mick Sid, thanks for tuning in. Helping to moderate the chat. Remember, guys, please keep the chat uh, free from uh, anything inappropriate. Uh, we all like to have a good time here on the JSGC live watch longs and uh, yeah we do that by uh, all enjoying each other's company and making everybody feel uh, very welcome uh, which everybody always is so yeah um, that's pretty much it really no spamming and uh, no ruining it for others there we go mix it going for a 2-1 victory today for Manchester City which I will take every single day of the week Big Morgan thanks for tuning in going for a 4-0 victory for Manchester City JP Walker thanks for tuning in going for a 3-0 victory today for Manchester City uh, Daniel thanks for tuning in much appreciated Ollie as well thanks for tuning in back in Julian Alvarez to score Rosie thanks for tuning in reckons Villa hopefully winning two goals to one I hope you're wrong from my own personal point of view we cannot afford a loss today against Aston Villa Villa, but Aston Villa, uh, they're going to want to try and tie up Champions League football, which would be a great achievement. They've still got to play City, Arsenal and Liverpool. Um, and if Aston Villa win all their games between now and the end of the season and you see Liverpool and Arsenal and City's wheels just start to fall off, I don't see it happening, but uh, Aston Villa's name has to be chucked out there <laughs> for a potential title threat. Um, but yeah, while she mathematically still in it and uh, you've got everything already in your hands and you still got everybody to play, there's still that chance. That's what football's all about. Hope, optimism and being in with the chance. And uh, again, from the City point of view, that's what we need a win for today to make sure that we're in the, with the best possible chance to try and win the Premier League. Uh, anything other than a victory today, as a City are going to find it very difficult to make it a record-breaking four Premier League uh, trophies in a row, which has never been done before. And there's a reason why it's never been done before. It's because it's very difficult to do. Daniel, thanks for tuning in, says, Do I see three waves fight uh, going down to the final game of the season? It would be great for the Premier League and a good advert for the Premier League as well. Premier League would love a free uh, horse race going into the final game of the season. I think a lot depends on 
on what happens with uh, City in the Champions League, if I'm being honest, because uh, if Manchester City end up progressing and we drop some points between now and us potentially making it through against Real Madrid, I can see City psychologically, in particular if Arsenal and or Liverpool haven't dropped any points between that happening, uh, Manchester City may be just saying, do you know what, it might be worthwhile us just, uh, you know, putting the Premier League as our least priority and start moving focus on to the other competitions, which is uh, whilst we're here. But that's not the mentality that Manchester City have. So uh, we will see. Uh, Rosie saying, uh, hoping that Villa will win, but Ollie Watkins is injured, not in the squad today, which is a blow for Aston Villa. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how Aston Villa uh, managed to adapt around that and what they do in terms of their formation. Uh, I'll, again, I'll speak about the teams in just one moment. Uh, Ollie says, if Villa wins, we don't win anything this year, he reckons. A big call there. Certainly, I think the Premier League today probably is done and dusted if Aston Villa win. I think I'll agree with that. Dej, thanks for tuning in, going for a 5 no victory today for City, says a uh, shout out from Nigeria thank you very much for tuning in my friend much appreciated, we've got Nigeria in the room, love that, uh, where else is everybody tuning in from, let me know in the live chat um, and yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in so far. Now up to 35 likes, 65 likes away from 100 likes. Also, don't forget social media links. They're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Email also in the description on the yellow banner too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. JP tuning in from Germany. Love that. JSGC will be in Germany in June watching some European Championship football and I am so excited for that. Oli tuning in from Nigeria and Rosie tuning in from sunny old Birmingham. Tom tuning in from England as well. Much appreciated for everybody for tuning in so far. So I want to give a big shout out to today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore. Uh, any of you guys that are regulars here on my channel know all about SofaScore already. Uh, SofaScore's keeping me up to date with all the latest scores from around the grounds. They're keeping me up to date with all the latest statistics for this game, providing my half-time and full-time analysis of this game. It's a free app to download and it's very highly rated. There's a reason for that. It's because it's absolutely brilliant. Keeping you up to date with all the latest football scores from around the world with all the leagues, but also keeping you up to date with all the latest scores from all the other sports that you guys like to watch as well, like me. I'm a huge cricket fan and rugby fan. I keep up to date with all the latest scores through SofaScore. All the scores are there in one app. I don't have to keep bouncing from app to app, checking all the different scores. It's all there in one place. Do go and check it out. I, I want to thank SofaScore for sponsoring this video. The link is in the description. I'll also paste it into the live chat as well. Uh, and also, uh, you can use the QR code alternatively on screen too. If you want to just scan that, that'll take you to the download page to download the free SofaScore app. Got the promo video, which I'm going to roll for you guys right now. I wanted to say a huge thank you to SofaScore for sponsoring this video. Do go and check them out. Anybody that does download the free SofaScore app does help to support the future content created here on my channel. It keeps these live streams coming for you guys as well, so I would appreciate that. Um, to, uh, JP Walker, where will I be in Germany? I will be at the beginning of June or to middle, to beginning, middle-ish, <laughs> middle more close to middle than beginning. Don't know why I said beginning. Uh, I'll be in Berlin, my friend, uh, for the uh, European Championships for a few days, which should be really good. Uh, Matthew, thanks for tuning in. Says City for the win, going for a 3-1 victory today. Love that, my friend. Thank you for tuning in. Christopher, uh, Ecuador in the house as well, all the way in South America. Love that one. Thank you, Christopher, for tuning in. Much appreciated and shout out to you. Absolute legend. Uh, Tom, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated going for a 2-0 Aston Villa win. Uh, I won't read out what words have been put there uh, in the live chat as uh, we do have... It's not it's not a strict policy here on the JSGC channel, but I more uh, just choose not to use that kind of language. There we go. Keep it nice, family-friendly, and I know you guys uh, do love that. Uh, I don't dip in towards that kind of content, but stick to my own kind of content. 
So there we go. Uh, Anthony says, hi, JS. Great job, mate. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Anthony. Much appreciated. Uh, Tom, we do have a couple of Villa fans in there. Opposition fans, always welcome here on the JSGC channel. Matthew, thanks for tuning in. Says, can I have my mod back, mate? I don't recall ever removing any moderators, if I'm honest. But uh, one second. There you go, my friend. Uh, Rosie says, 10 minutes till the match. That's a good time for me then to speak about the teams. And Frederick, thanks for tuning in all the way from the United States of America going for a 3-1 victory today for Manchester City. Love that one. Thank you so much to everybody for tuning in. Continue to leave where you're tuning in from and your score predictions in the chat, and I will read them out. So going on to today's video sponsor, Sofa Score. They're going to keep me up to date with what's happening around the grounds because we've got an important match already happening in the Premier League. You've got got Arsenal taking on Luton Town 37 minutes in there and Martin Odegaard has given Arsenal the lead they currently lead Luton Town at home by a goal to nil so as the table stands Arsenal going top of the Premier League uh, another game uh, that's kicked off early is Brentford taking on Brighton currently nil nil in the 37th minute as well uh, finally we've got Manchester City against Aston Villa got it all locked and loaded here uh, I'm going for a Manchester City win today uh, which 76% of so for score users users are agreeing with 13% going for the draw and 11% going with the Aston Villa win so going through the teams we're going to start off first with the Aston Villa starting 11 it looks like uh, they're potentially going with what I spoke about in my preview which was more of a 4-4-1-1 a uh, potentially that could alternate into potentially five in midfield potentially so a four five one and look to try and get a little bit more uh midfield control which wouldn't surprise me uh, i know aston villa are a negative side i'm not expecting them to park the bus but i am expecting them to look for a little bit more control in the game which is something that we've come to expect from uh, an Unai Emre side. So they're starting with Robin Olsen in goal. Uh, not too sure where Emmy Martinez is. Uh, if I think he might be injured. Must be injured for him uh, not to start here. So Robin Olsen given the nod uh, in goal. Uh, it's lining up with Konza, England international at right back. Uh, you've got Diego Carlos and Clement Lengler starting as their two centre-backs. I'm not too sure where uh, Pau, Pau Torres on the bench. That's a big call from Aston Villa there. With Lucas Digne, former Everton man starting on the left-hand side. Into midfield, you've got Captain Douglas Louise coming back to the Etihad Stadium. Alongside him, you've got uh, Eri Gubunum. I hope I've said his name correctly. Uh, and also Zaniola, Morgan Rogers, John Duran. And uh, that's their midfield. And it's looking like it's going to be Musa Diaby starting up top. Uh, Morgan Rogers, former Manchester City man, looking forward to seeing what he can do. Douglas Louise, looking forward to seeing uh, what he can do as well. Going on to do some incredible stuff, captaining Aston Villa tonight as well, which is good to see. Uh, Aston Villa got a very strong bench and some big calls there. I'm not too sure why some of these players aren't starting. So Gauchi uh, on the bench along with Alex Moreno. I was expecting him to start. He doesn't. Digne given the nod instead on the left-hand side at left-back. Uh, Pau Torres not starting on the bench. Callum Chambers. Uh, you've also got Kane Kessler. Hayden, Leon Bailey, not too sure why he's not starting, Yuri Tielemans, again, I'm not too sure why he's not starting either, there we go, uh, and Omar Kellyman starting as well, they have got quite a few injuries and suspensions at Aston Villa right now, uh, Ollie Watkins, Jacob Ramsey, Tyro Mings, Bubakar Kamara, Matty Cash, Emilio uh, Buendia, all out injured, the missing Emmy Martinez in goal as well, uh, and of course, Missing uh, the big absentee, which is McGinn as well, suspended for this game. He's got another game to serve. Uh, he should be back for Aston Villa's next game, I think. <laughs> I'm not an Aston Villa expert, hence the I think. Anyway, Manchester City starting 11. Uh, looking like City are going with a 4-2-3-1 formation. Could be uh, going with three at the back uh, and going more alongside like a 3-5-1 or a 3-3. Two one, whatever way you want to look at it. <laughs> uh, sorry, a three. What would it be? We go three at the back. Uh, we tend to go four. It'd be more of a three four two one. We tend to line up. Uh, I don't know. We have many different formations that we play. Anyway, uh, we're lining up today. No Edison. So Stefan Ortega Moreno given the nod once more 
in goal for Manchester City. Uh, we're going four at the back. It's the easiest way for me to talk about this. Uh, Rico Lewis starting at right back. Great to see. Thought he slotted in really nicely for City when he came in off the bench against Arsenal. Going with Ruben Diaz, recently single. Manuel Akanji and Yoshko Gavardiol as well. And that's the defence I think I would have gone for as well. So good to see. Uh, in midfield for Manchester City today, you've got Rodri, Bernardo Silva and Phil Foden playing behind the striker. So Kevin De Bruyne given a rest. Any regular starters for City that aren't starting in this game will be starting on Tuesday night, next Tuesday, against Real Madrid away from home. Expect more rotation from Manchester City. Any of the players that are regulars that have started against Arsenal and have started against Aston Villa, expect them not to start on Saturday in the early kickoff in our away match against Crystal Palace. City lining up with Jeremy Doku on the right wing with Jack Grealish on the left wing. Uh, looking at Manchester City's bench, we've got Scott Carson, John Stones, uh, Mateus Nunes, good to see Nunes back, Kevin De Bruyne, Oscar Bob, Mateo Kovacic, Mohamedou Sissoko, Sergio Gomez and Erling Haaland. Good to see Man City missing Edison today, missing Kyle Walker. His injury apparently more serious than City first thought, but Pep Guardiola remaining a little coy on the subject saying Kyle Walker's Kyle Walker, so if he fancies that he's fit, He'll make himself available for selection and, uh, yeah, apparently not going to be fit in time for the match away against Real Madrid, which I think is a blow. Uh, and also missing Nathan Ake as well. Uh, so, yeah, there are our lineups. Do let me know your score predictions, guys, in the live chat. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Do check out today's video sponsor as well, SofaScore. Links and details there in the description. I'm going to roll my promo video one more time, and then we're going to have our countdown to kick off, which, albeit only small today. Thank you very much there to SofaScore for sponsoring this video. Just heading to the chat once more. Anthony, thanks for tuning in. Said I very much enjoyed your work in the research area for possible transfer targets. It's really opened up his eyes. And you guys will be delighted to know that the regular daily Manchester City transfer series will be returning once more in June throughout the whole summer. June, July. And August, every single day with daily Manchester City transfer updates. It's going to be a big summer for Manchester City. And of course, uh, I will be keeping you guys up to date every single step of the way with that. John, thank you so much for tuning in. Much appreciated. Said he's got his red and black uh, 1969 Cup final shirt. Absolutely love it. The uh, AC Milan colours that City go for every now and then are some of my favourite shirts. Not a huge fan of red, being a Manchester City fan, but the the red and black, the AC Milan style kits, I absolutely love them. And I'd love for City just to go with that kit Every single season is their dedicated away kit because I just think it's the smartest of looks. Oli, absolutely spot on. Arsenal have already got one leading by a goal to nil in their home match against Luton. Luton really do need something. Teams are just starting to tick along and get points down at the bottom. Uh, if that continues for another couple of games, they're going to find themselves in a very uh, difficult predicament. So, uh, should be... Uh, very interesting. Hopefully Luton can go out there and do something. Tom says, hope Grealish scores tonight against his former team. Does start against his former side. Uh, I hope so. I do hope so. More so for the City point of view than for Aston Villa. But uh, Aston Villa, I don't think that'll go down very well with Grealish grabbing a goal. I can't imagine if he does grab a goal that he will celebrate. He's very much Mr. Aston Villa. Loves the club through and through. So, yeah. Matthew, yeah, I've got my formations mixed up. I was too busy thinking about everything else there is that's going on with the live stream. I've got the formation mixed up. I had to stop and think. And what am I saying? What formation do we normally go for? And then I'm going through the players in my head. <laughs> Is what happened there. Coming up with my excuses as we do have kickoff here at the Etihad Stadium between Manchester City and Aston Villa. Manchester City playing in their home shirts of sky blue shirts, white shorts, sky blue socks. Attacking from left to right, attacking the south stand first half. And Aston Villa playing in their home shirt. So it's the uh, claret and blue colours with the claret uh, shorts and socks. 
attacking from right to left and they're attacking the north stand the family stand the stand that Manchester City are currently redeveloping and uh, Aston Villa did get us underway in the game and they've currently got the ball actually looking to just push forward Digne plays a good looking ball down the left hand side here and uh, some early work here for Akanji to do to try and stop the cross and uh, takes a, a deflection so it's going to be a very early corner here for Aston Villa and some defending for Manchester City to do. Rosie cheering on Aston Villa there. I'm sure we'll be very intrigued about uh, uh, what Villa can do from this corner. Seamus, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Says, uh, going for a 2-1 victory today for City. I'm going for 1-0, my prediction. Phil Foden to grab that goal. Anthony, thanks very much for that. Much appreciated. And uh, Andy and Alison, thank you for tuning in as well. Much appreciated. And Tom says, what's my favourite Man City home kit? Do you know uh, the uh, old-fashioned, the old very plain Umbro shirt that we had? So corner comes in from Douglas Louise and City do manage to get ahead on it and should be able to get it clear and Phil Foden's going to drive City forward here. He's got a bit of space to work with Douglas Louise uh, trying to play chase there for Aston Villa. So here is Manchester City now just coming forward. Here is Rodri. Yeah, I think that Umbro one that we had, I think it might be 2010 when we had Manuel Adebayor when he ran the length of the pitch and slid in front of the Arsenal fans. It was amazing. Could have done with him actually on uh, Sunday to go and do something similar. We had a point to prove we wanted to go and score that goal. As Grealish just dinks the ball in and a shot comes in and into the side. Netting from Julian Alvarez. Desperately close that from Manchester City and good to see City having shots after a couple of minutes. Uh, I also really liked our home shirt from last season. I love the, the purple and the blue mix. It's unique, it's unusual. Uh, that's also one of my favourite home shirts that we've had. A good opportunity that for Julian Alvarez. Just wraps his foot onto it and into the side netting. Alvarez into the team today uh, ahead of Erling Haaland. Haaland just uh, being given a rest more so than dropped. As is Aston Villa coming forward and... Um, City do really well just to get a foot onto that. And Aston Villa wanted the advantage. The advantage did come... But uh, chooses not to play it and uh, Manchester City come away with possession as Hashi Oka has scored an own goal for Luton Town. And Arsenal now comfortably leading in their home match against Luton Town. Turning up just before half-time there. Akanji then. Player loves the business end of the season. What a ball that was to Jackie G. Into the penalty area. Grealish just dinks a ball in looking towards the back post and uh, there's just a call in between uh, playing a ball there for Bernardo Silva and uh, Julian Alvarez. He apologises there. It's just in between both and out of play for uh, a goal kick to Aston Villa. So we're now just 53 likes, guides away from 100 likes. Any help towards that would be much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe as well if you're new around here. And do check out today's video sponsor, SofaScore. Links and details, they're in the description. Remember, free app to download. Aston Villa then, just getting surrounded out. Um, looking to try and exploit that Man City high line and put an early press on. But uh, the tent, so, so they're trying to commit players forward with that two-man midfield for Villa's just kind of getting forced back and... Rico Lewis plays a pass in, looking for Phil Foden. There's just a little bit too much on it, and Phil Foden just uh, huffs out his cheeks there uh, and knows that if uh, the right pass with the right weight on it there came in from uh, Rico Lewis, that City could have potentially have created something that could have really tested Olsen in goal today for Aston Villa. Instead, Villa can have themselves a little bit of possession here. Olsen just works it to the right-hand side where he's got Carlos. He's got Conta as an option. He's gone further upfield and uh, Aston Villa have done really well there. Julia, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Hope you're having a good evening. Uh, Villa just again choosing to have a bit of possession here. Just knocking the ball around. Albeit in the final third, but uh, knocking it about nonetheless. Digne just uh, dinks a ball forward straight out of play. And that'll be a throw in for Manchester City. Zaniolo just chucks the ball out of play there. City weren't happy with that. As Man City can have a bit of possession. Here is Rodri then. He's got Jeremy Dock who is the option here on the right wing. Just uh, diverts in and he looks for that pass looking for Phil Foden. And uh, Aston Villa don't really have any problems there just getting that one clear. As Joshua Gavardio looks to try and mop up for Manchester City and unsuccessfully manages that. And thankfully a block comes in from Ruben Diaz. And uh, Man City can get possession there because Aston Villa had a player over. Uh, Aston Villa currently got a player down. 
looks like he's just had the wind knocked out of him more so than anything else. So play stops here. I think he just took a hit on Yoshko Gavardi, or Diaby uh, did. Uh, it'd be a big blow for Villa if Diaby can't continue. No Ollie Watkins and no Diaby. It's a really big blow. Uh, Aston Villa fans will be f uh, happy to hear that Diaby is back on his feet and moving around. I think he's just took a knock to the side of his head, more so than uh, anything else. Anyway, Manchester City can come forward here. Here is Akanji. She gives the ball to Ruben Diaz. Aston Villa trying to put that press on once more. Here's Rodri. And boy, did we miss his kind of uh, control in the match at Villa Park earlier in the season as Jeremy Doku goes down under a challenge from Lucas Digne. And that will be a free kick for City in a good crossing position. Hoping to see a little bit more from Jeremy Doku. He came on, looked really lively against, uh, Aston, uh, against Arsenal. And he looked really lively other than that penalty incident at Liverpool. But he's just... Like that little bit of quality in the final third, that well-timed pass or cross or effort on goal. So I'm looking for a little bit more activity from Doku in the final third today. Because a Jeremy Doku being clinical in front of goal would be deadly. For how quick he is, I want to see a little bit more. I don't want him to be uh, Jesus Navas 2.0, all pace and no end product. I want to see a little bit more from Doku. He's young, he's adapting, he needs time. But business end of the season, we need our players to really step up. Doku's a first team player, so we need him to step up, just like everybody else. So, free kick here for City. Foden just whips one in, too close to Olsen, and he'll uh, pick that one up. Uh, as uh, easy as that. Disappointing ball in that from City. And uh, Villa will have no problem uh, if all the set plays from City are put in as close to the keeper as that. And I was demonstrating in the match against Arsenal just how important set play is. Putting in a quality set piece. Other than that set piece that Nathan Ake put his head onto and should have scored. There was nothing else of quality from either City or Arsenal from set pieces. And in a game that's so tightly contested where an opposition is not giving you anything or no space you you need um you need to be clinical and when chances are presented to you like uh, with set pieces you need to apply them better quality balls into the box really attack the set play it's a really good outlet to score a goal particularly with teams that have been defensively very stubborn Grealish then just works the ball to Bernardo here is Rodri Back to Jack Grealish on the left wing. Just uh, charges into the penalty area. Looks for the runner. Rico Lewis and a block and ricochets. And it might fall lucky here for City. Douglas Louise does really, really well there for Aston Villa just to mop that one up. Anthony says, looks like a, a lively uh, front line up from City. Good work rate. Lewis pushing up as well. Rico Lewis, I rate him. Look how he's playing further upfield right now than Phil Foden. And then Rico Lewis is a really good option for City. One of them players that defensively can push forward, particularly in the absence of John Stones. He's a very different player to John Stones. John Stones pivots a lot better. I think his ball distribution is a lot better. But Rico Lewis is very good at pushing himself forward and getting into good positions as Rodri just has a strike. It's a bit of a tame effort straight to Olsen. Uh, it'll make a comfortable save there for Aston Villa, so it remains nil-nil here at the Etihad. Anthony also says Doku is ace, but a bit of a speedboat with no driver, if you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. He's, he's all pace, no end product. That's what I've seen from Jeremy Doku so far. I want to see more from him. Aston Villa just give it away very cheaply here. Here is Bernardo Silva into the penalty area. City showing a lot of attacking intent here opening 10 minutes. They want that opening early goal. Grealish tries to play a ball into the box. Villa managed to ricochet it. Jeremy Doku, lovely work right there. Wins the ball back for City. Good stuff that from Doku. Pep Guardiola applauds, shows his appreciation. It was good work that from Jeremy Doku. I speak about end product and uh, things from a, an attacking point of view, but it's just as important that you're doing your defensive responsibilities as well. And Jeremy Doku did that really well there for Manchester City. Here's Foden. She plays the ball back to Akanji. 
I think he was thinking about uh, just spreading the play there back to the left-hand side. Decides to go with Phil Foden on the right. Here's Doku now just squares the ball across. And there's the opening goal. There's the end product from Jeremy Doku. He squares the ball across. An assist for Doku. And it's Rodri into the back of the net, into the roof of the net. Tenacious from Manchester City. And City lead here at the Etihad by a goal to nil. And it's the goal scorer of the Champions League final, Rodrigo. What a start from Manchester City. Lovely, lovely football. It all comes about... Right, we're not going to change the score here because Doku could be offside. One minute. Hold. It's lovely work. It's a good pullback from Doku. He looks up. He finds the space. He finds Rodri's right foot. Rodri doesn't have to take a touch. He can just strike the ball through into the back of the net. It's a really good goal from City. And if the Doku's managed to keep himself on side here, it'll be no more than what Manchester City deserve as far as I'm concerned. VAR are having a look at this potential offside on Jeremy Doku. So just hold for a moment. He looks offside. For me, from the naked eye, but who knows these days. I think he's going to be onside here. I th the line showed him as being onside there. From the naked eye, he looked offside for me. I think this is going to be given. And I think this is going to be 1-0 Manchester City. Goal given. 1-0 Manchester City lead then. The goal does stand. It is an assist for Jeremy Doku. It is some end product. And it's a lovely finish from Rodri into the back of the net. And uh, that is a massive boost for Manchester City. And what City don't want to do here is sit on this. Keep going. Keep attacking. Keep trying to score them goals. Good, good stuff that from City. Very happy. I want City to continue because they've had complete control. Villa just looking for a response, driving forward. Ziola up against uh, Rico Lewis. Manages to get a throw in there as well for uh, for Aston Villa. So Digne is going to take the throw in. It looks like he's going to lob this ball straight into the box. So some defending here for City to do. Villa have surrounded the near post here. Long throw comes in. Initial header won by Villa City. Haven't got it clear just yet. Looking to just try and scramble it clear. Foden doesn't put his foot through it. And in the end, just ricochets out. And that is a goal kick. So City survived there. Uh, and City hold on to their lead here at the Etihad Stadium. Leading by a goal to nil. Andy, excellent finish from Rodders. A lovely, lovely finish into the back of the net. And uh, Manchester City are in control. And it's been a good performance. It's felt like a very refreshed performance. City look more open, but just from an attacking point of view, they just look better. Now, Aston Villa, I was saying before the importance of them not being the low block team. They're not a part of the bus team. City will have space against Villa because they don't know any other way. When you go up against a manager like Unai Emre, he wants Aston Villa to be expressive. He wants them to play football. That's a brilliant ball from Douglas Luiz. And on the volley, a shot comes in. And it's a lovely save from Ortega Moreno. Reads that ball really well. The offside flag does go up, but City aren't to know that that was offside. And that was a lovely save from Ortega Moreno. It just drifted offside there. A shot comes in and it's a good save. It was uh, Duran with the goal, uh, with the with the effort there for Aston Villa, and it's a, a good save from Ortega Moreno. Offside flag does go up, but um, that was a really good save nonetheless. Seamus, how many goals is Rodri on? Let's have a look. One second, bear with me. Rodri uh, transfer market. We want they provide all these statistics. So. Rodrigo, let's have a look, good long ball forward, Grealish keeps himself onside, the ball comes in from Bernardo, I mean, I can't believe Rodri's only 27 years old, I can't believe that I'm a 
nearly a year older than Rodri. Rodri's got six Premier League goals. He's got one Champions League goal, no goals in the FA Cup, no goals in the Club World Cup or European Super Cup, and no goals in the Community Shield as well. Uh, no goals in the League Cup either, so he's on seven goals for the season. He's getting there. Double figures. He's getting there, isn't he? Here's Rico Lewis driving forward for City. Here is Bernardo Silva. And free kick given against Rico Lewis for a coming together there. So 84% got a poll running. Who do you think is going to win today? 84% of you guys thinking City are going to win. 11% going with Aston Villa. And 5% going with the draw. Here is Aston Villa looking to come forward. Digne. Oh, it's good football, this. Really good football. And the try and square a ball across there. Duran does and Rodri does ever so well to make the interception. And City can have a bit of possession. Aston Villa aren't scared to get players forward. Oh, they're getting five or six players at any one time forward. As I said, they're not scared to play football. Aston Villa are one of them sides that are just as likely to go 2-0 behind as they are to uh, end up equalising, they'll take the game to City. Here's Rico Lewis, good pivot from Phil Foden. Oh. <laughs> Looks to play the through ball in for, um, I think it was for Jack Grealish. Through ball comes in now into the penalty area, it's just dinked towards the back post, Digne gets his head onto it, falls to Rodri, I thought he might have fancied a Rodri rocket there. He doesn't. Yoshko Gavardil in a foot race. A uh, good interception for Manchester City and should be a free kick. Diaby there putting Gavardil under praise. He's not giving a he's not giving a free kick. A bit of pushing and pulling going on, but nothing more in it for me. Anyway, 17 minutes in here at the Etihad. Manchester City lead by a goal to nil. Don't forget, leave a thumbs up now past 50 likes. More than halfway to our like goal, which is brilliant. Now just 48 likes away from 100. So any help towards that would be much appreciated. Do subscribe as well if you're new around here. And do go and check out today's video sponsor, SofaScore. Links and details there in the description. Brilliant interception there from Akanji and Doku driving into the penalty area. Overlap comes in. Doku goes for the shot. Block comes in and uh, the ricocheted loops up and into the arms of Olsen in goal today for Aston Villa in the absence of Emmy Martinez. Here is Douglas Louise. I'm so impressed with Douglas Louise. I think he's a brilliant player. We speak a lot about former City players that we'd like to bring back and being interested in this player and that. Frim Pong being one of them, having a brilliant season with uh, Leverkusen and City looking for a, a potential option on that right-hand side of defence who uh, likes to get forward, get assists and score goals. Uh, but I think Douglas Louise is one of them players that I would love back at Manchester City. I think he'd be a brilliant option in midfield. John Stones is injury prone. You want a player that can sit in, in that little hole in City's midfield. A player that allows us to have a bit more freedom for Rodri to get forward and score goals like today. Someone like Douglas Louise would be perfect as far as I'm concerned. Abhishek, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Andy says, uh, oh, Aston Villa are in here. One second. Equaliser 1-1. One, one. It's a good finish, that. A really good finish from Aston Villa. Through the legs of Stefan Ortega Moreno and into the back of the net. It's Duran with the goal. And I was saying before about Aston Villa, they're just as likely to get that equaliser as they were to go 2-0 behind. And Aston Villa have continued to get players forward. And when you're getting players forward and you're attacking Manchester City, you have every opportunity of scoring goals. And it's just one pass forward from Douglas Louise. Lovely pass into midfield. A well-timed run from Duran. Perfectly on side and past the keeper and into the back of the net. As good as that. It's a really good finish. A really good finish. Very similar angle to Doku when he missed against uh, 
Liverpool at Anfield where he hits the uh, inside of the post. Duran just manages to sneak it into the back of the net. Uh, and uh, that's an equaliser for Villa. One all and more work for City to do. VAR are, are having a look. Possible offside. I'm not sure where the possible offside is. I think it's he looks miles onside there for me, but it's all to do with angles. Looks perfectly onside for me there. Yeah, my, miles onside. 1-1. One, one. I really know why it's taking so long, to be honest. Good att it's good attacking play from Villa. Uh, as, as Andy was saying, says, much prefer this game. Credit to Villa. Arsenal, uh, the weekend, it was like watching them in the late 90s. Ultra defensive, no intent. Aston Villa are showing every bit of intent to score goals. I think VAR are now having a look at whether there's interference in an offside. No, nothing. It's one all. One all. Ethan, thanks for tuning in. Stefan's a brilliant goalkeeper. He's an excellent goalkeeper. I want Ortega Moreno to commit and stay at Manchester City past this summer because he wants more regular first-team football. I don't blame Ortega Moreno. He, he makes the angle tight for Duran. It's, it's, it, to be honest, it's more of just a, it's all about the finish. It's a, such a, a good finish, really good finish. It's disappointing. Uh, you know, City have been in firm control of this game, dominated the game, dominated the the opportunities. But Aston Villa sit in fourth place in the Premier League. There's a reason why City um, Aston Villa sit fourth in the Premier League because they're a very good team. They're happy to attack teams. They're happy to play football with good players. Here's Grealish getting forward for City. Lovely feet from Grealish. Finds Rico Lewis. Gives the ball to Jeremy Doku on the right. Backs himself there, does Doku. Does well, whips one in and too close to the keeper and gathers it up. Not the worst ball in that from Doku. Just nobody in the six-yard box to attack City for, for City this time. Justin, thanks for tuning in, says lazy from Ruben Diaz. Uh, it, it weren't brilliant defending from City all over the shop. It, that goal happened because City got tackled on the edge of the Aston Villa penalty area and w within five passes were scoring a goal. A little bit too open from City, but you need to find that balance. You don't want to sit too tight and sit back on a 1-0. You want to push and try and score goals. As it is at the moment, Aston Villa are having a bit of a ding-dong battle with, with City in terms of attacking football. Now, there's been games, Chelsea, Spurs, where teams have been happy to attack City and come away from the Etihad with points, and that's what Villa will be looking to try and do. That's a lovely ball from Rodri. Doku gets his foot onto it. Grealish has a shot, and just wide from Jack Grealish on the volley. Goes just wide. He, he, wants, he wants a corner. I don't know if the keeper maybe gets a fingertip onto this or not. Uh, it weren't the best of balls in from Jeremy Doku, who also looked like he was offside in the build-up there. Uh, but Jack Grealish positions himself, gets a good strike onto it, and just past the post, not a million miles away. I'm still pretty optimistic that City will win this game. We're playing some good football. We look like we want it. It's not lacklustre. I think the keeper does just get fingertips on that. I think it still would have gone wide, but keeper isn't to know that. Referee's given a goal kick anyway. I think Doku was offside in the build-up, so there's a flurry of incorrect decisions there. Perseverance. City need to stick with this. Here is Douglas Louise. Works the ball nicely to the left-hand side. Digne, not the best of touches from goal scorer Duran in the absence of Ollie Watkins, grabbing a goal for Aston Villa today. Works the ball back to Ortega Moreno. And as uh, Abhishek says, Liverpool and Arsenal, they're the ones that are happy with this if this stays the same. Hopefully, Manchester City can continue just to play football and, and find that goal. 24 minutes in. It's been a good game of football. I've enjoyed it. Aston Villa keeping things very competitive. In the meantime, here's City coming forward. A good pass that. Really good pass from Bernardo to find Jack Grealish. Now, I'd like to have seen Jack Grealish just back himself and run to the byline there. 
City just too happy to play the safe passes and work it backwards. It's good for your, your ball retention. It's good for keeping possession and keeping opportunities alive. But Jack Grealish is one of our attacking creative players. I'd like to see him just back himself. But with him pushing forward there, could have just pushed City an extra two, three yards further forward. And that's what I'd like to see more from Jack Grealish with. I'd like to see him back himself a little bit more. You know, he's at his very best when he's attacking because he's a good, he's a really good attacking player. People are always speaking about his role and calling him a defensive winger. But there's more to being a left winger at Manchester City than just ball retention and control. You want to see him attack. You want to see him create opportunities. You want to see him get assists and score goals. Same with Jeremy Doku as well. Two different kinds of wingers. But at the end of the day, you are a winger. And I want to see you do what wingers do, which is help to score goals and create opportunities. Good defending that from Yoshko Gavardil. And I've noticed over the last couple of games, Gavardil's really come into his own. Defensively, I think he's, he's improved a lot for Manchester City. Um, and what I've noticed is he's not really got forward as much as what we were seeing. I think he's another player like Docker that was lacking a bit of uh, end product in uh, when City were attacking. But uh, defensively, he's just really tightened himself up, sticking with, uh, sticking with his runners and... I wouldn't be surprised to see Yoshko Gavardiel starting for City at the Bernabeu next week. But we've got a job to do here against Villa. We've got a match against Palace to think about first before we even start thinking about Real Madrid. City will have it in the back of the minds, but um, you know, you've got to manage the situation that we're in. And <laughs> Quite frankly, we've got nine Premier League games and nine wins needed if we're to stand any chance of winning the Premier League. And even that might not be enough. It's not in our hands. Ruben Diaz pushing City forward. Gives the ball to Manuel Akanji. Here's Rodri then to Alvarez. His pass was a bit wayward and it interested Diaby then. Gavardio does well. Keeps hold of the ball for City. Bernardo just floats a ball in. City just ricocheting. Doing really well here. Good movement from City. Good passing. Foden does get there. Can he turn his man? Finds Alvarez. Here's... Rodri now and this is it with City when we start Alvarez I think from an attacking point of view City always just look a little bit sharper because Alvarez has got good link up play Gavardio just goes with a ball across and Villa do really well to defend that out City fans wanted a penalty not for me let's have a look I think they're asking for handball no 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 not for me he's off balance not even sure it hits his arm to be honest and uh, Villa can have a bit of possession. It was good work, that, from City. And, yeah, uh, Alvarez, I love Erling Haaland. Uh, he's a cracking striker, uh, one of the best in the world. But Man City, in terms of the team, just link-up play and the, the lovely just one-touch football that City can do with, with Alvarez, uh, I think just suits the formation and the, the, the football that Pep Guardiola wants to play more than Haaland. Haaland's more of a very physical player. He's a player that put it on the plate for him. He'll put it in the back of the net. Uh, he's lacked a bit of a clinical touch so far this season. He's still a Premier League top goal scorer, by the way. Uh, but he's certainly not been as sharp, I think, as what he was in his first season at Manchester City. But still, you know, Premier League top goal scorer and scores goals for City. But I just think we look a little bit sharper with Alvarez starting and I'm happy to see City starting Alvarez and giving a bit of a rest for Haaland. Gives Haaland a bit of a reminder that he's not guaranteed to just walk into the City starting eleven. If Haaland wants to start games he needs to start assisting and scoring goals like the other attacking players. Andy, I think you're spot on about Gavardi. He's in an unfamiliar position. He was he's a centre back who plays at left back who cuts into midfield. City Crying for a free kick there. Referee doesn't give it and uh, Aston Villa can come forward here. City need to get over that because we're into the next phase of the play. So we've got work to do. Mario reckons City scoring again soon. I do hope you're right, my friend. And thanks for tuning in. Taylor, thanks for tuning in. Says Doku and Alvarez need to stop trying to dribble three plus players. Cost us too many times already. We were at our best when we were doing that lovely one-touch football. Combinations of Alvarez and uh, Bernardo Silva Grealish. Phil Foden, 
the lovely one-touch football. You can work your way around Aston Villa's defence that way. It's a lovely timed run and uh, ball forward that from Villa. Offside flag stays down. Diaby into the penalty area. Tries to play a ball across. Takes a, a good deflection and falls nicely for City. And Ortega Moreno can take control of the football for City. Works it to Doku on the right. Under pressure from Digne. Does really well to hold him off. Really well to hold him off. Uh, Ortega Moreno's miles out of his goal and City are just panicking a little bit here. Rico Lewis does really well and gets City a free kick. I'm not too sure what Ortega Moreno was doing. That City nearly lost possession and Ortega Moreno was outside his own penalty area. Morgan Rogers putting the pressure there on City and committing the foul on Rico Lewis. And he asked, but Onake had to adapt. He did very well to adapt. He just needed that game that he had against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League a few years back just to settle him down. And Gavardio seems to have, be having it now with City. A free kick given against Grealish. City can't believe it. Grealish furious, shouting at the referee. Don't really see what Grealish does wrong there on Douglas Louise. Let's have a look. He just makes the tackle. There's nothing wrong with that. It's an awful decision, that. Right in front of the referee as well. Standard of Premier League officiating. Vincent Company's going to get a, a touchline ban for his comments, but he's right. The standard of officiating in the Premier League's a joke. It's right in front of the referee. How does the referee deem that a free kick? Anthony, you're right. Holland has been a bit static. Premier League defenders have learned how to deal with him. He has to now adapt. Erling Haaland to his game to continue to be a tremendous success as Jack Grealish has talked his way into a yellow card for dissent. Erling Haaland on the bench having a bit of a laugh there with uh, Oscar Bob, two Norwegian teammates there. Scott Carson looks like he's listening to the conversation there. Nathan Ake just behind the dugout too. Amelia, thanks for tuning in. Tuning in from Zimbabwe. As we're now 44 likes, guys, away from 100 likes. Any help towards that would be much appreciated. Do subscribe as well if you're new around here. And do check out today's video sponsor, SofaScore. Links and details. They are in the live chat. Here is Ortega Moreno for Manchester City then. Gives the ball to Yoshko Gavardio. City can continue to monitor and come forward here. Here is Bernardo Silva to Rico Lewis. Anthony, I think, I think you're right. I think we will see Oscar Bob at some point uh, today. He's been in fine form during the international break with Norway. Uh, he's, he's looked impressive when I've seen him for City as well. He's a good option, Oscar Bob. He's a good player. I'm looking forward to seeing more of him next season as well. Grealish then gives it to Bernardo, squared across, looking for Alvarez and ball ricochets away. Aston Villa want a, a high boot. Free kick, referee says no. Play continues. Rico Lewis now into Bernardo Silva. Needs a bit of cover on that uh, left wing. Eventually, Jack Grealish can find Rodri. Looking for that option. He's not really got it, so he'll give the ball to Rico Lewis and Villa just do well to get a foot onto that and put it out of play. Duran, it was goal scorer for Aston Villa. Putting his foot onto that and putting it out of play for a throw into Manchester City just next to the corner flag in the Villa final third. Here is Julian Alvarez for Manchester City then. Finds Jack Grealish. Gives the ball to Rodri. Rodri works it to Manuel Akanji. And he takes a heavy touch. He's going to give the ball away there. He had no support and that was good work from Aston Villa. City just need to try and surround Duran out here. He still manages to find his pass. Morgan Rodgers now. Former City man signed for Aston Villa in January. From uh, Middlesbrough in the Championship. Currently led by former Manchester United midfielder Michael Carrick, their manager. Did really well with, with uh, Middlesbrough last season. They were unlucky not to go up in the playoffs. Not having as good a season this season. Taking far too long to find their own feet. 
And referee wants the play to continue. I thought that might have been a free kick for Aston Villa. Nice to see the consistency from the referee of not giving free kicks when probably there should be. Here's Phil Foden dropping the shoulder to Jeremy Doku. Ah, oh, lovely feet from Jeremy Doku. Lovely feet from Doku. Squares a ball across, headed clear by Villa. He shows glimpses, Doku, doesn't he? He shows glimpses. Andy, it's just so inconsistent, isn't it, from the officials? So inconsistent. The amount of yellow cards Arsenal should have had was ridiculous. Not to get any was mind-blowing. Jack Grealish talking his way into the book. Uh, it probably was a yellow card. He went running over to the referee. probably did say some words. Uh, it is dissent. It would be a yellow card. But it's, it's frustrating that, you know, some referees uh, penalise it, others don't. Where's the consistency? Oh, it's lovely from Rodri. Brilliant find. Finds Grealish. Drives into the penalty area. Come on, Jack. Back to Rodri. Here's a Kanji lining up about 40 yards out from goal. There's not too much support there for a Kanji, and Rodri's just got to work it to the right hand side. Foden finds Doku. Uh, here is Foden once more. Rodri, oh, it's a good find. Here's Rico Lewis. Alvarez, surely! Oh, it's a good save from Ols Olsen, but... <sighs> I'm sorry. That should be 2-1 on Manchester City. Julian Alvarez looks frustrated. It's a clear-cut opportunity, that. Clear-cut opportunity for City. It's a great build-up play. Uh, Alvarez should be bagging. For me, that should be a goal for Manchester City. It's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He's got the angle. He's on his stronger right foot. Should be a goal every single day of the week. That Villa coming forward, put a ball into the box. He managed to get a foot onto it. Doku can't get it fully clear. And uh, Douglas Louise commits a foul on Rodri there. Man City wants to get going quickly. Here is Bernardo Silva to Jack Grealish. Oh, that's good stuff from Jack Grealish. Really good from Jack Grealish. Driving forward, and that should be a free kick for City. And a free kick on the edge of the penalty area, and yellow card comes out for Douglas Luiz. City putting pressure onto the referee for the yellow card. Classic of the referee. I feel like City are just putting pressure onto the referee to give a yellow card. He just takes a touch on Jack Grealish, and he goes down to the ground. I mean, Alvarez goes low, he goes across the keeper, he just doesn't quite get it right, and it's just too square, that shot. Should have been a goal, though. Anyway, 41 likes, guys, away from 100 likes, any help towards that would be great. So let's get them likes up. We're not doing too bad at the moment, which is good. It'd be good if City could find a goal here. 38 minutes in at the Etihad. One all. City's opening goal by Rodri cancelled out by an equaliser for Duran for Aston Villa in the absence of the injured Ollie Watkins. And City have got themselves a free kick here in a very tasty position. We're looking about 25 yards out from goal. To the, uh, well, it depends which way you're looking at it, but Manchester City, if we're looking at it square on, uh, right-hand side, if we're looking at it from the player's point of view, just to the left-hand side. And this is a very good position. There's enough room to get this up and over the wall. To get it on target. Ask a question of the keeper. You get the pace and the accuracy right. Could well be a goal. Alvarez stood over this then. What can City do from this free kick? Alvarez. He gets over the wall. Uh, gets it too high though. Over the top. Uh, the crossbar into the stands and out for a goal kick. And uh, I see what he's looking for there. Alvarez just didn't quite have the execution. It's Alvarez just not quite on it. Uh, I wonder if that's just uh, down to game time with Manchester City that he's just a little bit rusty. Andy Allison's told him off for not liking. Thank you very much for leaving a thumbs up. Much appreciated now. 38 likes away from 100 likes. Here's Jeremy Doku for City winning the ball back. Finds Rico Lewis, squares it across, can't connect. I mean, we've pulled the ball back once and connected once and found the goal. Everything else balled into the box and pulling back. Just not quite been there for City right now. Here's Rodri to Doku. 
tackled, but only as far as Julian Alvarez. Finds Rico Lewis. Uh, Amelia, last time I looked, it was 2-0 Arsenal. Here is Lewis once more to Ruben Diaz. Finds Rodri. Here's Foden. Foden might fancy a shot here, you know. Too many touches from Foden. Lined up well on his left foot. Thought he'd just put his foot through that and a shot. Uh, City do well winning the ball back. Douglas Louise, it was winning the header. Sending it forward. Manchester City can win the ball back, though. Here is Gavardial now. Finds Rodri. Alvarez to Foden to Lewis. Back to Foden and just doesn't sit right for Foden. And uh, Aston Villa can put the foot through it and get it clear. And City do really well to win the ball back. Here's Jeremy Doku. Finds the pass to Alvarez. Looking for the cutback. And uh, it's not great from Alvarez. City players Rodri and Grealish there. Hands up in the air wondering... Alvarez, why is the ball not coming across there? I'm not too sure if he was just looking to try and put a ball across or looking for a shot. I'm not I'm not sure. I think he was looking for the shot. Weren't great. As I said, Alvarez just not quite on it for City yet. Looks a bit rusty. Yeah, it's a bit it's frustrating at the mo. Um as I said, just need to persevere. The game's there for City if they want it. They just need to find the clinical touch. I wonder if at uh, some point Pep might say, do you know what, we'll chuck Haaland on, we're looking for... We seem to be creating perfectly fine. We need a goal. <laughs> you know, and there's, you know, you've got one of the best strikers uh, in, in the world on the bench. You need a goal, chuck him on. Here's Conser, just working the ball back for Villa to Carlos. All the way back to Olsen. That's a really good pass. And that's a good, good turn. From uh, Aston Villa 2. Thank you very much, Mario. Keeping an update. Uh, it's 2-0 Arsenal. And uh, the other game, Brighton-Brentford, 0-0. I shouldn't say uh, Brentford-Brighton. 0-0. Olsen runs it close with Alvarez. Manages to get his foot through it and get it clear. Ruben Diaz. Manages to get his foot onto it and get it clear. And Grealish goes down. And referee waves play on. And City can attack here. Here is Rodri to Bernardo. Is a heavy touch from Bernardo. I think that ball was meant for Grealish rather than Bernardo. And City just give the ball away. And uh, direct football coming in from Villa there. Ruben Diaz does well. Holds Duran off. Uh, he's, he's got another head injury. He's gone down. City not interested in stopping. Referee is and stops the play. Have a look. Again, just not much in it. And a bit of time wasting from Villa more than anything else. I don't really understand why teams are continuing with the time wasting because it all just gets added on. It's how you end up with ridiculous amounts of time being added on in the uh, at half, uh, just before half time and just before full time. And then it, you know, it just ends up being, I don't know, four minutes added on uh, at the end of the first half and City scoring them four minutes. Aston Villa will feel really angry that there's, there's been a couple of goals and no injuries and four minutes being added on. But there's twice that duran has gone down with a head injury and just got straight back up and received no treatment that must have wasted at least two minutes. And so if the time does get added on, which it should, and City scoring it, to me, Aston Villa only have to, or Duran has only himself to blame for that. It's completely unnecessary. Foden drives forward, finds Grealish into the penalty area. Overlap comes in as a coming together between, uh, I think, Concer and Bernardo Silva and referee. Uh, gives a free kick to Aston Villa and City. Just for the first time, just starting to look a little frustrated. Anthony, I think you're spot on, says, I think this is what uh, is so important about rotating players. You can see the rust in some of them. Not a criticism. They just need to shake it off and freshen everything up. And it needs to provide that competitive competition for City because we're getting to the business end of the season. Yeah, we're playing every three to four days and we are going to be playing every three to four days if we do progress in all our competitions. That You need them options. You need your Rico Lewis's, your Jeremy Doku's, your Julian Alvarez's uh, to be sharp. So they need their minutes to stretch the legs to get used to the to the game. So for, for me, I, I stick with Julian Alvarez. He's looked good for City, in particular when the one-touch football's come into play. It's just been 
in front of goal, it'll take a bit of time. I think City have got to give him at least 70 minutes or so here before they start thinking about chucking Erling Haaland on. The whole point of giving Haaland a rest is he gets just that. But as the game goes on, if we're needing a goal, Haaland's got to come on. That should be a free kick for City. Phil Foden gets a kick into the back of the heel. Douglas Louise is the man. He's already on a yellow card. City asking the question to the referee. Make sure the referee knows that he's on a yellow card. A bit of finger whacking going on from uh, Ruben Diaz as well. Man City get themselves a free kick in a similar position to the one before that we had with uh, Alvarez that he put over the top of the uh, crossbar. Mixed, thanks for tuning in once more. Busy on the gram. Is a free kick. It's a cheap free kick to give away. Uh, and we're into the first of what I just said. Four minutes. I said it'd be four minutes. If there weren't the time wasting that had gone on by Duran with the two head injuries, um, we'd have been looking at a couple of minutes added on. As it is, as I said, if City end up scoring in them four minutes, Aston Villa won't be very happy that four minutes have been added on, yet there's been no injuries and only two goals. Yet they've only got themselves to blame for the time wasting. And it's the perfect time to score this. Free kick for City then. Alvarez stood over it. Foden stood over it. Grealish stood over it. What can City do from it? Foden's going to strike it this time! <laughs> Philip Walter Foden, you beauty, into the back of the net. Perfect time to score. And Manchester City back ahead here at the Etihad Stadium. We're having fun tonight. It's been a good game of football. It's a really good game of football. And kudos to Aston Villa for providing a good game of football. I'm so used to City playing teams who just don't want to play. They don't want to take City on. There's a massive gap in that Aston Villa wall. Konza and Zaniolo, the ones, there's a gap there. And Foden just goes straight through that gap and into the back of the net. It's really poor defending from Aston Villa. Really poor. And Manchester City back ahead. It just changes the dynamic of that team talk at half-time. We do still have two minutes plus probably another minute uh, due to the goal being scored to be added on. So there's still a bit of work for City to do. Kevin De Bruyne would be proud of that Foden strike right through the wall. If they kept the gap, I'd be saying that's a terrible free kick from Foden. He takes the risk, the gap opens up. Keeper's blinded so he doesn't dive because he doesn't know where it is. It's all on the wall. Just opened itself up. Poor from uh, Aston Villa. Here's Jack Grealish to Bernardo. Squared across, not the best of balls. And an offside flag goes up. Uh, we're into the final minute added on here. Mixon says bringing us some luck. Nadir is a big goal. Belter says Anthony. Anthony says, at what point do we rest Rodri? Uh, <laughs> you guys aren't going to like this, but Saturday? I was saying before that any player that started against Arsenal and started tonight just can't start on Saturday. Oh, this is good stuff. Alvarez! Oh, he needs his shooting boots on. It's great football from City again. Just passing it around. Working it into space. Working it into the gap. Alvarez just hesitates just a second too long. The gap gets closed down and Dinier can make the block there. I feel like a sharp hilly and Alvarez had have scored then and have scored before and we could have been out of sight. Uh, anyway, we're still... Where the four minutes are up, but there's, there should still be another minute or so left of this first half. We'll see. Here's Gavardiol. Gives the ball to Jack Grealish. Here's Gavardiol now. Just works it across to Foden. Referee is adding that minute on, it seems. Akanji then works the ball to Jack Grealish. Into the penalty area. To Rodri. Rodri Rocket. He doesn't want to go for it. Not yet, anyway. Just uh, dinks the ball over to Grealish. Keeps himself on side. Bernardo to the byline. Squared across. Alvarez, and it's a good save. Alvarez could have had a hat-trick. He really could have had a hat-trick. 
just slightly over Alvarez. I tell you what, you have six foot four Haaland. He's there. He's not jumping big early. He's just going boom. In it goes. Unlucky from City. Pep hands on his head. Can't believe it. Probably some strong words said in Spanish there by Pep as well. So corner for City. Last chance of the first half. Been a very entertaining first half. Very enjoyable game of football. Alvarez to put a ball into the box. Diaz forward. Rodri forward. Kanji forward. Not the best of balls in. Keeper fists it clear. And that will be half time then here. Manchester City leading by two goals to one. Probably could have scored more. City have dominated this game. They deserve to be ahead. Villa have looked lively. They've played some good stuff at good uh, at, at times. They've just made the odd mistake here and there. And they've been punished by Manchester City. But overall, I would say that this is a really good game of football. I'm enjoying this game of football. City have done well after going ahead. Uh, disappointed to concede to keep working, scrambling and find that goal. What we need to do now, heading into the second half, is uh, manage this situation like we would in any game where we're 1-0 ahead. You've got to keep pushing, keep going, and you've got to be looking for that killer two-goal cushion and keep pushing from there because it would be good for City to get a bit of a confidence boost to go out, not only pick up a win here, but pick up a win and, and score some goals and you know win by two or three would be, would be massive for City. So, at the moment, we're in a good position. It's only a one-goal lead, though. Uh, anything can happen in football, we know that, and we've got work to do in the second half. A bit rusty from City in front of goal, but overall, uh, City are winning, so I can't complain. Uh, so, on to today's video sponsor, brought to you by SofaScore. Links and details there in the description, also in the live chat, and you can use the QR code on screen to scan uh, that QR code in and uh, go and download the free SofaScore app. Manchester City's expected goal rate at 1.49. Scored two goals. That's good. Aston Villa's expected goal rate at 0 0.29. And put their only shot on target away so far. Three shots for Villa. One on target. One goal. Ten shots for City. Five on target. Uh, and two goals. Which, uh, yeah, it's not too bad of a ratio in return there for Manchester City. City dominating the play as well. 65% uh, possession compared with 35% possession for Aston Villa. Uh, Marcus, uh, Haaland will come on, I reckon, in the second half. I just don't think it'll be at half-time. I reckon you'll probably see Haaland maybe get 10 minutes, if needed, of course. Um, I think he could do a bit of a confidence in scoring a goal. Normally, uh, I'd be saying rest him and don't uh, give him any minutes if it's not needed, but I think he needs a bit of a confidence boost. Maybe I could say the same about Kevin De Bruyne too. But the whole point of these players not starting is to get that rest. So City may just choose not to go to their bench. Wouldn't surprise me either. We'll see. Uh, one corner apiece for both sides. One offside for both sides as well. Uh, four fouls for Manchester City with one yellow card, of course, for descent for Jack Grealish. Five fouls for Aston Villa and one yellow card going to Douglas Louise, who needs to be careful. He had a talking to from the referee, so uh, I reckon he's uh, maybe a couple of challenges away from a red card, so he needs to keep it clean in the second half. Two big chances created for City, two big chances missed, uh, missed including that huge chance for Julian Alvarez. Uh, saved by the keeper, but the shot too square, saved by his foot, and then a big save from the keeper right at the end of the half. Aston Villa with one big chance created, not missed, put into the back of the net from Duran for the equaliser earlier in the first half. Um, seven shots for City inside the box, three outside the box. Aston Villa with three shots inside the box and nothing from outside the box. 335 passes for City at a 91% pass completion rate. Uh, Aston Villa at 179 passes with uh, 153 completed and an 85% pass completion rate. Man City's long balls have been very good. 13 of the 14 connecting at a 93% long pass completion rate. Aston Villa connecting with 11 of the 23 attempted at a 48% long ball completion rate. Crosses, not great from either side. One cross connecting out of five for Aston Villa. One cross out of eight connecting for Manchester City. Something certainly I think we could improve on uh, heading into uh, the upcoming games. In terms of some defensive stats, eight tackles for City, 
7 for Aston Villa, 1 interception for City, 3 for Aston Villa, and no surprise that Villa have made more clearances at 15 with 4 for Manchester City. So, goals today for Manchester City uh, coming from Rodri after 11 minutes, Duran finds the equaliser after 20 minutes, and Phil Foden from that free kick in the 45 plus 1 minutes for Manchester City means City lead here by 2 goals to 1. So, guys, do get your thoughts in the live chat. That would be much appreciated. Please do leave a thumbs up now. Just 35 likes away from 100 likes. Also, don't forget to uh, subscribe. That would be great. Also, don't forget as well to check out my social media links. Uh, they're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. And do go and check out today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore. And using SofaScore, today's video sponsor, going around the grounds. Uh, Brentford nil, Brighton nil in the 81st minute. Uh, you've also got Arsenal taking on Luton. Arsenal currently leading that game by two goals to nil. Uh, I think if Luton do grab a goal uh, whilst it is half-time, because that game will end whilst it is half-time, I think if uh, Luton do get a goal, uh, I will switch over and I'll give you a live... Uh, reaction watch along to the remainder of that game in the 81st minute but as it is right now uh, Arsenal sitting pretty comfortable so uh, I'm going to put on my halftime entertainment for you guys to enjoy it's brought to you by my partner channel Mixed links and details there in the description do go and check them out like and subscribe this is the kamikaze cocktail and shot which is better is the question sit back relax enjoy grab yourself a snack and a drink and I'll see you all for the second half Oh, what's going on guys, Mixit here, back again for another cocktail video and today's cocktail is a kamikaze because it's a popular one back in the day from the mid 1950s, it might be a little bit before along with the kamikaze cocktail I will be doing the famous kamikaze shots as well so I will show you how to do that because it's made popular in the 1970s and 80s and it's never really looked back because it was created on the American naval base just after World War II in Japan so let's make this famous and famous drink so first of all, what we're going to make is the kamikaze cocktail. So each shaker, put some ice, which we've done, 45 ice cubes. And the first ingredient to go in, guys, is 45 ml or one and a half ounce of a Grey Goose vodka. For a drink as famous as the kamikaze, it deserves a good vodka, especially since the vodka heydays in the 70s and 80s. Right, next up, one ounce of triple sec. As you can see, we're using a Cointreau. And last but not least, 30 ml or one ounce of fresh lime juice. Right, so put your lid on. Now give it a good shake, eight to ten seconds. Get nice and chilled. Now straight into your martini glass. And the final thing you want to do now is garnish it with a lime wedge. And there we go guys, one kamikaze cocktail, how does it taste? It's absolutely fantastic. Cause yeah, but now I can't wait to try it as a shot. Right, now to make the kamikaze shot or shooter. Because it's a very fun drink this, so get your cocktail so get your cocktail shaker and put some ice. Again, four to five badge cubes. The first thing we're going to go in guys is at two ounces or 60ml of vodka. Again we're using grey goose.
Next up is three and a quarter ounce or 22.5 ml of triple sec, we're using a Quantro. Last but not least, it's 22.5 ml or three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. So put your lid on, give it a bang, now give it a good shake, 8 to 10 seconds, get it nice and chilled. So give it a bang to separate, there we go. Put your strainer on and now double strain it into your shot glasses. And there we go, the kamikaze drink or kamikaze shot or shooter. Can't wait to try these, it's a very famous drink that's. Now if you enjoy my lemon drop video, you'll like this as well, it's very similar. It's gonna say, especially Cosmo lovers or the lemon drop lover will love the kamikaze drink on cocktail as well, they'll love it. So I would recommend it. So for the kamikaze shot now, we'll go down them both. So as I'll give my thoughts on it. Cheers. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Especially if you love your lime and lemons as well, it gives it that nice bit of taste, the backbone of this a drink and shot. This is absolutely beautiful and I would recommend it. So we'll go kick to it. But just to freshen up, I will have this cocktail again as I'll give you a proper taste, as I will give you a proper taste note for it. Quite tart, it's quite tasty, but I do like it because I like the lemon drop, I do like the fresh lime juice. What well, gives it that one thing I like about this cocktail is I say, I'm glad I used a grey goo, it's a quality vodka for such a for such a cocktail and drink, it deserves it. I say you can taste it, it's very, very similar to Cosmo. I say you can see the difference with the cranberry juice and the fresh uh, lime juice or lemon juice for a lemon drop. I say that's only Things that change between the three. Well, that guys is the kamikaze cocktail and the kamikaze drink or shots or shooters. Because I hope they enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to mix it. If you wish to see more cocktails like this, do let me know in the comments below. Any cocktail recommendations or drinks or shots? Because I do them all. Because I. And is anyone seeing this channel? Just let me know. But that is the Kamikaze Cocktail, the Kamikaze Shot, and I will see you guys for the next cocktail video. Cheers. Thank you very much there to Mixid for providing today's halftime entertainment. Uh, you can go and check them out. Links and details, they are in the description. So... Uh, we are just waiting for the uh, second half to get underway. It shouldn't be too far away for uh, Manchester City in a big second half. It is looking like Arsenal are going to win that game. They are still 2-0 up into the 88th minute now, uh, which will see Arsenal go top of the Premier League. They're going to go a point clear of Liverpool. Liverpool play tomorrow at Anfield against Sheffield United. Uh, a win for Liverpool will send them back top. They must win that game, by the way. Uh, Manchester City, we're level on points currently with Liverpool. Uh, with Liverpool, of course, having that uh, game in hand tomorrow against Sheffield United, which uh, Liverpool win will go three points clear of City. More importantly, I'm just keeping an eye on the goal difference. At the moment, uh, Arsenal extending their goal difference if everything stays the same on Manchester City by a goal and that'll be a plus 12 in Arsenal's favour. Uh, with Liverpool Manchester City are four goal difference behind uh, them with Liverpool of course playing Sheffield United so uh, just something to bear in mind but uh, for 
for City, considering last couple of games we've not won, uh, both against uh, Liverpool and against Arsenal. We need to get back to winning ways. So today's all about three points. With Real Madrid coming up next Tuesday, it's going to be the same again on Saturday against Crystal Palace. There'll be some rotation in place for Manchester City and it'll all be about just uh, picking up the three points and trying to stay in contention when it comes to the Premier League in the hope that uh, Man City will be still somewhere uh, around where we want to be until it uh, comes around to City uh, having... Uh, they're playing their game in hand uh, and of course was being in the semi-final of the FA Cup will end up having two games in hand uh, both against Brighton away which is being played at the moment on April 25th if Manchester City are playing on a Tuesday night in the Champions League semi-final should we get there then that game will be moved to Wednesday the 24th of April and we are still waiting on a date for the Spurs game which if City do progress in the Champions League I am expecting that to be in the midweek before the final game of the season uh, where we'll be taking on West Ham at the Etihad Stadium and so uh, it will be Spurs away being Ultimately, the penultimate game for Manchester City, if things run how Manchester City want them to run, which is remaining in contention in the Premier League, reaching the semi-final of the Champions League, uh, and hopefully, mixed in between there, reaching the final of the FA Cup as well, which could well set up another date. We had the first time ever uh, last season, an FA Cup final that was a Manchester derby. You wait uh, forever for one, and you could have two come along in consecutive seasons, just like London buses. Uh, so the players are making their way out of the tunnel now. Manchester City out first. Aston Villa following up. We'll uh, see if there's any changes that have been made by either side as we head into what's going to be a big 45 minutes for Manchester City. It's uh, obviously big for Aston Villa as well. But uh, Manchester City... A lot closer to Liverpool and Arsenal at the top of the Premier League. We are the three times consecutive Premier League champions as well. Expected to be right up there at the top of the Premier League. So we do have a job to do here in the second half against Aston Villa. City are going to be getting us underway. Attacking from right to left. Attacking the North Stand. The family stand in the second half. Aston Villa going to be attacking the South Stand and their own fans. Doesn't look like any changes have been made here. For the second half, and Manchester City do get this half underway. Anthony, thanks very much. Much appreciated for downloading the Sofa Score app. Much appreciated. It's a cracking app. As I said, it keeps uh, everything all in one place for you. Whether you're uh, following just uh, you know Premier League football, you're following Manchester City, or you're following uh, other football from around the grounds, from around the world, uh, and also other sports as well, which is what I really like. I like that they've got things like the NFL and darts on there that I like to follow and keep up to date. I don't have to keep searching around and finding the scores. It's all just on there, <laughs> which is super convenient, and I like convenience. So here's uh, Ruben Diaz for Manchester City. Gives the ball to Jeremy Doku here on the right-hand side. Phil Foden, been everywhere for City so far in this first half, hasn't he? Him and Rico Lewis, and Bernardo actually for that matter. Lots of legs, lots of running. Is Aston Villa just knocking the ball around very nicely. And is. Aston Villa just coming forward and uh, Diaby has a shot and uh, good recovery work back from Yoshko Gavardil and out for a corner to Aston Villa. Here's Konsa. Throws the ball back for Villa to have a bit of possession. City got everybody camped inside their own half. Park the bus from Manchester City. Here's Digne on the left. Up against Rico Lewis. Gets his cross away and it's too close to the goalkeeper. Too close to Ortega. He'll collect that and he'll roll it out and look to try and get City going as quickly as possible. John, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Here's Phil Foden. 
Doku looks like he's offside for me there. He might put his foot through this. He does. It's a good save and City can't follow up the rebound and the flag doesn't come up. It's a good save from the keeper. Not a bad effort from uh, Jeremy Doku. And Nadir, I think you're spot on there. City need to continue to be ruthless, not go into our shells and sit on a 2-1. I need to keep pushing, get that killer two-goal cushion, get that third. Gives us uh, everybody a bit of comfort, eases our anxiety. Here's Phil Foden to Bernardo Silva, and it's a good save from the keeper. I don't think Bernardo realised just how much time he had. Good goalkeeping from Olsen to close the angle down. Just looked like Bernardo Silva was just going to tuck that home for Manchester City and that was going to be that goal that was looking for and the end keeper makes a really good save. Closes that angle down really well. Pep Guardiola clearly given the instructions kill this game off as quickly as possible. He'll want to start rotating a few others. Here's Alvarez. Something we saw a lot last season when we was competing on all fronts. Can't really rotate fully so he'll use... Uh, the options of substitutes to try and kill games off as quickly as possible, but there's only one goal in this. Aston Villa certainly aren't killed off as uh, Diaby just runs the length of the pitch and into the City penalty area. Cross comes in and uh, Phil Foden said he's been everywhere. He's at centre-back there, heading that clear for City and finding Julian Alvarez. Here's City then coming forward. Alvarez sensibly just turns away and uh, wins Man City a free kick. Very sensible that from uh, from Julian Alvarez, just to have that possession instead. Keeping an eye on the uh, Arsenal game. Uh, it's now full-time. Arsenal have won by two goals to nil. It's a bit of a blow that for Luton. Let's have a look at the uh, live Premier League table. Uh, yeah, Luton three points behind, seven games to play, sitting in the bottom three with a worse goal difference than Brentford, Everton and Nottingham Forest as well. So Luton have got it all to do to try and stay in the Premier League. And of course, Man City have Luton Town coming up very soon. I think it's, uh, is it April? I want to say April 13th, the Saturday. Uh, Brentford nil, Brighton nil, the other game in the Premier League that has finished. Here's Jeremy Doku for Manchester City just uh, turning, looking for that uh, extra option. Here's Jeremy Doku now. Gives the ball to Rodri, floated across to Grealish. Here's Jeremy Doku now, just twisted and turning. John, you spot on, my friend. Do need a third. We need that reassurance. Here's Phil Foden now to Rico Lewis. And it's floating around. Says he want a penalty. Referee says no. There's not really that many appeals from Rodri. I'm more concerned that Rodri just initially limped. As uh, City get themselves a free kick just inside the Aston Villa half. Duran had gone in a little too strong and City get themselves a free kick. Not a penalty for me, that. As we're now 33 likes away from 100 likes. Yeah, Duran went too strong in, hand in head on uh, Manuel Akanji. That'll be a free kick for Manchester City then. City still leading by two goals to one here at the Etihad. Aston Villa managed to dispossess Phil Foden. Can't get past the Kanji. Makes the interception and out for a throw into Aston Villa just inside the Aston Villa half. That will allow City to get the players back after giving the ball away. So Aston Villa can turn that interception into some possession here. Here is Carlos now to Conza. Work to DRB. Up against Gavardiel. Does really well. He wants a free kick. Referee thinks about it and does give a free kick. William, thanks for tuning in from before as well. Much appreciated. And uh, Anthony says, very happy with Doku so far. He's had a good game, he just needs a bit more end product. 
He's got himself an assist, which is good. It'd be good to see a little bit more from Jeremy Doku. He's, he's, he's one of them players, I think, that is more than capable of just causing absolute havoc just because of his pace and directness. He's having a good a good game. Aston Villa are allowing him to have a good game because they're so open. Here's Doku has the shot and straight into the hands of Olsen in goal. He's looked lively. Yes, Jeremy Doku. He's looked really lively. Mario, Arsenal have won 2-0. Means Manchester City need to win this game. City probing and continuing to come forward here. Ball gets worked towards Doku. City can't keep it in play, though, and that will be a throw into Aston Villa, just on the edge of their own penalty area. Now 32 likes away from 100 likes. And Marriott was 0-0 in the other game between Brighton and Brentford. Amelia, where is Haaland? Haaland is on the bench for City today. City want to rest him, and I think Pep Guardiola is back in the team that they can... Get this game won without Erling Haaland. If they think that they need a goal, I think they'll wait till around the 70th minute. So probably not for another 15 minutes or so. Here's Doku to the byline. Tries to find his pass. I'm not too sure if he was trying to find Lewis or Foden. Pass was in between them in the end. and uh, Ball given away. And here's Aston Villa driving forward now. Akanji out of position. Oh, that's a good work. And shot comes in. It's a great save. Douglas Louise, it was with a shot. Receives the pass from Diaby. And Ortega Moreno makes a good save to tip it over the top of the crossbar. It was Douglas Louise, former City man and Aston Villa captain for today. Driving Villa forward there. It was really good work from Diaby. He just peeled away from his defender, Akanji there. Douglas Louise. And... Probably too close to the keeper. Gets a good hand onto it and tips it over the top of the crossbar. And out for a corner to Aston Villa. Which Douglas Louise has gone over to take. Uh, the chance for the likes of Conser and Carlos and Co to get forward. Corner comes in. Oh, it's a good flicked header and it's a good save from Ortega Moreno. We've not seen too much from Aston Villa since they've scored the goal. They've not really found a way to... Attack too much, but looking very lively through Diaby's pace on the counter-attack and set play there, looking another good outlet. So good ball into the box, to the near post. Flicked header comes in. I'm not sure if it's Digne that gets his head onto that. A good save from Ortega Moreno. Two good saves from Ortega there. And Aston Villa... Go close. Here is Ruben Diaz. Great stat from TNT Sports. City have conceded the fewest set-piece goals so far this season, conceding just two. Arsenal, the next best defence uh, from set-pieces, conceding five. Lovely disguised pass from Doku. Finds uh, Alvarez, keeps the ball in play. Back to Doku. It'd be worthwhile Doku just sprinting inside the penalty area. You never know. Someone might just make a challenge, leg him up or something and win a penalty. He's got that pace. He's frightening them Aston Villa defenders. Here's Doku. Lovely feet from Jeremy Doku. Great pass to find Grealish. In a little bit of space. Grealish goes for the shot. Uh, Contra had his angles covered there. And the block comes in. Andy, you're right. Aston Villa continuing to look lively there with that counter attack. It's what City needs to be really careful of. Keith, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Anthony says our number two keeper is the find and buy of the season. He's been a brilliant signing for City on a free as well from Bielfeld over in Germany. And it's, a, it's going to be a great shame that uh, signed him last summer that uh, this might be his last season with Manchester City because uh, he's going to have showdown talks with City at the end of the season to try and get regular first team football, which... Uh, I just can't see Ortega displacing Edison. I think Edison's very much Man City's first choice and number one goalkeeper, which means 
we could be uh, losing an outstanding goalkeeper and our our number two, I think, would be a big blow. You never know, we might choose to stay, which I think would be a huge plus, a huge bonus. I think that would be one of the best bits of business we could get done, actually, in the summer, keeping Ortega at City. It's always good to have that option from the bench. Any injury to, to Edison and... Uh, you know, most teams would feel the impact of such a quality goalkeeper being injured. It's always the power of having a really good number two. Uh, and Ortega, you know, walks into most Premier League starting 11s. Uh, dare I suggest, I think Ortega would be an improvement on Raya or um, Ramsdale at Arsenal. That's how good he is. But we'll cross that bridge if and when we get to it. In the meantime, Ortega, in the absence of Edison, is starting and doing well, which is brill. As we're approaching the hour mark, we're now 30 likes away from 100 likes. Any help towards that would be great, guys. Here's Phil Foden driving into the penalty area. Lovely feet from Foden. The ball just doesn't fall kindly to Bernardo Silva, and he can't find his pass to Jack Grealish and Aston Villa looking for... Uh, a potential counter-attack, and they've managed to release a, a counter-attack here as well. Here's Douglas Louise. Finds Zaniola into the penalty area. He has a shot, and it's a good block from Ruben Diaz, and he celebrates his own good piece of defending there, covers his angles really well, and Morgan Rogers sends a tackle in on Jeremy Docker and City can have themselves a throw him. Lovely feet from Phil Foden. Desperately unlucky. He just gets clattered in the end by Carlos. Phil Foden just dusts himself down. Gets himself back up on his feet. And ready to continue. Having a good game, Foden. Could do with that third goal. Really could. Nadir, I would literally taken the words out of my mouth. I was just about to say that Aston Villa are starting to grow into this game and City just starting to take the foot off the gas. Not finding a way to get our attackers involved. Aston Villa have continued to push players forward and seeing the likes of Douglas, Louise, Consa and Digne getting forward more. Which is forcing City onto the back foot. Uh, City really pushed first five minutes to try and get that third goal and it's not come, that reassurance. And Villa know there's only one goal in it. While it's only one goal in it, they're very much in this game as Cross comes in from Digne. Way too close to the keeper. Ortega uh, pick that up and uh, roll it out. And Bernardo Silva looks to push Manchester City forward here. Plays a good ball to Jeremy Doku. He drives here. Really good work. Foden finds Doku. Back into the penalty area. Doku does really well to find Rodri. Rodri just switches the play to the left-hand side. Finds Jack Grealish up against Consa. Finds Bernardo Silva. Bernardo just couldn't quite get it under his grasp. And Villa can momentarily get it clear. Gavardial does really well to get City back in possession here. Sensibly just plays a pass back to Jack Grealish. Seamus, <laughs> Barcelona and Madrid looking to buy Ortega. Everyone will be looking to buy Ortega his quality as that shot comes in. And there's the third goal for Manchester City. And who else? Phil Foden. He has been outstanding. Absolutely outstanding for Manchester City. And just as Aston Villa was starting to grow into the game, we needed that assurance of the third goal. And in off the post, Phil Foden finds that goal, that killer two-goal cushion, that third goal that Manchester City were looking for. It's all smiled once more again at the Etihad Stadium. City lead by three goals to one. And Manchester City looking good here for three points as well. Very much a much-needed three points for City. Still got work to do in the final 30 minutes, but uh, it's good stuff so far. Uh, an assist for Rodri. Foden didn't even... It just t takes it first time 
in off the inside of the post and into the back of the net. 3-1 Manchester City. And I think it's important that we can... Aston Villa have got nothing to lose now. They're going to commit forward. So I think it's important here that City continue to defend properly, continue to push and try and get a fourth. Goal difference, guys. Goal difference. We're in a good position. We lead by two. No reason why you can't be pushing to try and win by three or four goals when you're in that position and you're in the mood. Douglas Louise on a yellow card. Going to come off. Gets a stand innovation at the Etihad as well, the former City man. Gives the captain's armband to concert. And uh, Aston Villa... They're going to uh, chuck on Yuri Tielemans. Former Leicester man. Another quality central midfielder. Good options there for uh, Aston Villa. Uh, Leon Bailey also coming on for Villa. I think they might have made three changes there, Villa. I'll just wait for confirmation on who's come off. As uh, City do really well to win the ball back. And here's Jeremy Doku for City. He's had a good game, Doku. It's been really lively. John said he went for 4-1. Not too far off with 3-1. Mario reckons 4-2 to City. You might not be too far off, guys. Seamus reckons Harlan needing goals. A good time to chuck him on. Again, you might not be too far off there, Seamus. So, confirmation of them substitutions. DRB, um, Ira Bognum and Louise uh, have all come off. And Bailey, Tielemans and Chambers have come on. Anthony reckons Villa will have to open up now and City need to start thinking about that goal difference. You know, you've got fresh players on the bench. There's no reason why City can't be thinking about uh, killing first and foremost this game off and getting that free goal cushion that will kill this game off and give City the three points. That's a lovely ball over to Jeremy Doku here. And there's no reason why City can't continue to score goals and get more. As Rico Lewis has a shot and just wide. Not too far off the uh, English youngster there. Just wide of the post. Going across goal, nearly another assist there for Jeremy Doku. In the end, Rico Lewis just doesn't quite get his feet sorted out. And uh, it's dragged wide of the post and out for a goal kick. Andy, Louise to City in the summer. I'd have him, I just don't think Villa will sell him. It'd be very expensive. And if Aston Villa make Champions League next season, which I'm expecting him to do so... Uh, any team buying any players from Villa, you'll struggle to do so without a release clause. It's the only way we managed to sign Jack Grealish, a very expensive release clause. As we're now 29 likes away from 100 likes. So any help towards that would be great. Do check out today's video sponsor, SofaScore. Links and details there in the description. Uh, and finally, do subscribe as well if you're new around here. Here's Grealish. Plays a pass into Rico Lewis. He's got Bernardo Silva further ahead of him. Doesn't use him. He's pushed to the ground. He's not going to get a free kick. City are going to get dispossessed. And City do well to try and win the ball back. Gets a bit scrappy in midfield. Referee's happy for play to continue. And Rodri's going to come away with the ball here for Manchester City. Here's Phil Foden. I wonder if Pep might continue the rotation theme here if City can get a fourth. And you might see the likes of uh, Sosoa and um, Sergio Gomez and co. come on rather than the... Uh, first team players I still think it's worthwhile chucking Haaland on for a few minutes just to try and get him a goal and a bit of confidence City may also just say we want him to have 90 minutes off like they will probably with John Stones and uh, Kevin De Bruyne I don't think I'd put John Stones on the pitch when you don't need to I think I'd just give him another rest and I'd maybe start him against in fact, I'm not even sure I'd start him against Crystal Palace, to be honest. I'd probably give him the game off here and then give John Stones maybe half an hour against Palace, see how he is. Could give John Stones 20 minutes here, really, and just uh, give him a rest against Palace. You don't want to rush him back. City will have all their eyes on Real Madrid and they'll be thinking, start John Stones in that game. I'm not sure. There's lots of options here that City could go down. Rodri tries to play a ball looking for Jack Grealish. Doesn't get anywhere near enough uh, height or pace on that. Dispossessed. And Villa look to try and commit players forward here, looking to try and attack Manchester City. 
And Jack Grealish should get the ball back here. Conte dispossessed and he's got the run of Bernardo if he wants to use him. He does use him. Squared back across. Rodri takes one touch and the shot comes in and the block comes in as well. Really good block that by uh, Conte and Morgan Rodgers can pull Aston Villa forward here. Gavardio slips. Ah, oh, it's a lovely sliding challenge from Bernardo Silva. And City can find that interception. Here is Manuel Akanji for Manchester City then. Gives the ball to Ruben Diaz. Here's Phil Foden now to Gavardial. City just started to take their foot off the gas now. Here's Rodri to Gavardial. And it's been good that City have rotated. We've got rest for our players. But we've also looked pretty sharp. Which I think is good. And he reckons John Stones would get kicked to high heaven if starting against Palace. I just don't think I just don't see City taking the risk of starting him. I'm just wondering if you're going to put John Stones on for 20 minutes. I think I'd rather him be put on for 20 minutes here than against Palace and just give him a full rest, just so he's ready. You know, he's had a week's rest before that Madrid game. If we are going to start him against Madrid, which is what I'm expecting us to do. <gasps> I don't think Kyle Walker is going to be fit, so Akanji will start on that right hand side. Diaz will go on the uh, through the centre, and I think I think it might be too soon for Ake. So Gavardial's going to start, and then you go with John Stones alongside Rodri. Is what I would do. I think I want a bit of midfield control, so I'd go with Kovacic and Kevin De Bruyne. Foden goes on that left. Bernardo goes on the right, and. I mean, do you go with Alvarez or do you go with Haaland? As a shot comes in. Wow. What a player Phil Foden is. It's a hat trick. It's the pick of the lot into the top corner of the net. It is stunning. It's sensational. It's sublime. It's 4-1 Manchester City and it's Philip Walter Foden with the four for Manchester City. And it's third of the evening. It's the Foden show here, guys. Boom. Pick that one out. Manchester City back to winning ways. That's great from Foden. Goes down. City want a free kick. Villa scrambling. Dispossessed. He slips. <laughs> I, think, I think the slip suits Foden. Allows him just to drag the shot and into the back of the net. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a great finish from Foden. And as Cleveland Brown says on Family Guy, boom goes the dynamite. Super stuff from Foden. Super stuff from Manchester City. And City on their way. Aston Villa choose to make another change. Their fourth. Moreno comes on, and I think Aston Villa's probably going to look to tighten up here. They won't want this to finish, you know, 6-7-1 to Manchester City, which if they play as open as they are, is what could happen. Um, right, what do you do if you're City? Do you take your foot off the gas now and start preserving energy ready for Palace and thinking about them big games, or do you think goal difference? I think if I'm City, I, I think you've got to think about goal difference. We've already rotated. I think I'd get the likes of Sissoko, Bob, and... Um, Gomez and co on and you just continue to push and you say the objective is here score goals goal difference Grealish in the penalty area City aren't stopping City aren't done yet here's Foden to Rodri 19 minutes remaining to Foden lovely work from Foden finds Jack Grealish to Gavardial. It'd be good for City to go out and make a statement win now. Score six or seven. Got 20 minutes. More than capable of doing it. I think it might just be the win that City have been looking for. That's a good drop of the shoulder from Foden and just can't get ahead of um, Tielemans there and Villa can come away with the ball. And he says, all three goals that Phil scored, Villa keeper just hasn't moved. Yeah, I just had a text from my mate 
Uh, and he's just said, is it wrong to say that City look much better without Haaland? That's a good tackle. I mean, Alvarez, he's linked up well, but he's not hes not done too much. I, th I think this is more down to how good Foden is playing behind the striker. And obviously Haaland's that physically empowering that it's, it's difficult to play ahead of Haaland. Whereas with Alvarez, he's happy for to drop and he's happy for Foden to lead that line. And he's happy for Foden to go and score the goals, whereas Haaland always wants to play off the last defender and score them goals. He's the one that wants to score them hat-trick. So you, you've just got to find the balance. And I was saying in the build-up to this game that if City may want to think about dropping Erling Haaland, because we looked better, as far as I'm concerned, when Haaland wasn't in the side when he was injured, because we just looked more fluent. I don't really get why that is. I want Haaland to be on the pitch because he's a brilliant player and he's a brilliant goal scorer, but for some reason, something just always seems to click for City. So, I don't, I don't know. More importantly, think about goal difference. We're only two behind Liverpool now. It'd be good to really close that down. Puts Liverpool under pressure not only to win tomorrow against um, Sheffield United, but to win and win comfortably just puts a little bit more pressure on them. And pressure does funny things at this time of the year. Here's City coming forward once more. Bernardo to Foden, Grealish into the penalty area, squared across, takes a deflection and how to play for a throw into Manchester City. And now uh, Aston Villa can get themselves a uh, a bit of respite. Zaniolo is the one that's gone down under a challenge from Ruben Diaz. So Man City are going to choose to make a couple of changes. Kovacic and Mateus Nunes are going to come on. Rodri, of course, is going to be one that comes off. No surprise there. I presume Kovacic is going to go in his place. And, of course, no yellow card as well uh, for Rodri, which is good. Running the risk of them suspensions. Anthony, you also make another good point. Observation only. Does KDB as brilliant as he, as he is strangle Phil Foden out? Because Phil Foden to make him work and put De Bruyne in. The City tend to move Foden out wide. De Bruyne is getting no younger. I think he's 34 in the summer. Which means you need a long-term replacement. And I feel like Man City already have a long-term replacement. His name's Phil Foden. But to me, Phil Foden's a different kind of midfielder. Phil Foden actually reminds me of Ilkay Gundogan. So I'd like to see City try and make things click a little bit better with Phil Foden in midfield, supporting KDB, rather than just, to me, taking the easy option and putting Phil Foden out wide when you don't need to. We've got a bit of a selection headache, actually, against Madrid. City will want control of midfield and control out wide, which means you'd think Grealish would be starting against Madrid. And if he does, Bernardo's going to start, Foden's going to start, De Bruyne's going to start. How do you fit, fit them all in? Kovacic has got to start for his, for his, uh, for his control in midfield. So somebody's going to miss out. How do you make it work? It's a good, good selection headache to have. As uh, we're now 26 likes, guys, away from 100 likes. Any help towards that would be great. Do subscribe as well if you're new around here. And do check out today's video sponsor, Sofa Score. Links and details there in the description. Got a bit of treatment uh, for Zaniolo. He's probably going to go off here for Villa. They'll take their opportunity to make their fifth and final change. Uh, and I wonder, as I said, if the likes of Gomez and uh, Oscar Bob, maybe Sosoa might come on for... For Manchester City, but uh, I think Pep will want to keep this nice and fresh and nice and sharp because he will be thinking about goal difference and that little confidence boost as we're now three quarters of our way to 100 likes. 25 likes to go, guys. So Aston Villa are going to make that change now. And you're going to see Zaniolo come off. And Aston Villa are going to chuck on Kellyman. In his place. Seamus says, I'd like to see Rodri, Foden and Grealish play midfield sometime. It'd certainly be something worth looking at. Grealish's ball control. I think he'd be very suited for ball retention in midfield. 
I don't think we'll see it at any point this season, but I think it'd be worthwhile just maybe experimenting with during pre-season. City going with the extra game in pre-season as well. So it, I think it would be worthwhile certainly trying. Here's concert. Gives the ball to Leon Bailey. Aston Villa into the penalty area. Goes down. They want a penalty. Shoulder barge comes into the back. Question gets asked. And uh, referee says no. And then he's going to give a free kick to Manchester City for a shoulder barge. <laughs> oh dear. Let's have a look. There's not too much in it from Mateus Nunes on uh, concert, to be fair. So coming together shoulder to shoulder. More of a... There's a little lean in the back. There's not enough uh, for a penalty. I just don't think it was a free kick to City either, but that was my opinion. A coming together, gleaning in with your shoulder to me is not a free kick. It's a physical game, football. You've got to be able to hold off the challenge and someone coming in and barging you with the shoulder. Now, if he'd used his hands and physically pushed forward, I'd say, yeah, free kick, but just a coming together and leaning in with the shoulder. I don't know. It's just me. Yeah, it's a great ball from Doku to find Rico Lewis. He goes in. Foden, already on three, looking for four. Tries to get his shot away. He can't. Goes to Doku. Uh, just on the edge of the penalty area here. Phil Foden just seems to be walking a bit gingerly. He's running over to the sideline. I don't know if he's just knackered. Uh, hopefully not injured there, Foden. He doesn't look comfortable. I'm just going to keep an eye on him. He's back, he's back moving now. I think he just wants to take a breather. He's definitely hurt Foden there. He's he's crouching down. He wants to continue pushing. That's his mentality. A shot comes in from Mateus Nunes and into the stands. Not a million miles away there from Mateus Nunes. Pep Guardiola shows his appreciation. Nunes gives his thumbs up there, looking for a goal. And City are going to take that opportunity now to make these changes. Sergio Gomez is going to come on, as well as Oscar Bob. And that surely should mean Phil Foden. Hat trick for City today. Definitely my JSGC man of the match coming off. Doc, who's had a good game, he's also coming off here for City. So City choosing to put on some wide options. So I presume we're going to see Oscar Bob go on the right hand side and Sergio Gomez go on the right, uh, on the left. Uh, oh, where's he going to go? Will they go on the. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we might see Grealish go into midfield and Bob goes on the left and I don't know. Let's have a look. Maybe it's going to be Gomez in midfield. Bob goes on the right, Grealish on the left. Could be Gomez on the left, Bob on the right, Grealish in midfield. I'm not sure. Well, Grealish is definitely staying on the left-hand side. Uh, Sergio Gomez has gone on the right at the mo. So City asking Oscar Bob to go behind the striker. It's interesting. Here's Sergio Gomez then. So 10 minutes here. Can City add to their tally and uh, get another of their goal difference, which would be good. Here's Kovacic now to Gavardi or Rico Lewis. And because City have made these changes i don't want to see city just taking the foot off the gas there's the opportunity here for city to to win big geordie thanks for tuning in it's a fantastic win for city we're under pressure we needed to win the game aston villa are a really good side uh this has felt like a really fluent fluid performance from city really good there's a bit of a selection headache now ahead of saturday in our away match against crystal palace do you go with Haaland or do you go with Alvarez? That's the question now. <laughs> Can you get Foden? Keep your hands off. <laughs> uh, as I said, City's next game is the early kickoff against Crystal Palace on Saturday. Not much of a turnaround for City, so it will just be reflection and recovery tomorrow and then preparing for Crystal Palace on Friday and then travelling down to South London for the game early on Saturday. We'll be back with uh, another live watch along for you guys to uh, look forward to and enjoy. And we'll have all the build-up, of course, to, uh, to that game uh, and everything else for you guys to 
enjoy as well. Here is uh, Ruben Diaz for Manchester City. Just plays a pass in to Sergio Gomez. Finds Rico Lewis. Back to Sergio Gomez. Back to Rico Lewis. Sergio Gomez. Good stuff. Here's Oscar Bob now driving into the penalty area. Can't get past Digne and uh, Digne does well. Shield him. Uh, Oscar Bob out there and a goal kick for Aston Villa. Uh, and Aston Villa have stopped committing players forward now. They have just taken the foot off the gas and just said, um, we'll shut up shop. Famous words from Alex Ferguson, Sir Alex Ferguson, when Manchester City beat Manchester United 6-1 at Old Trafford back in 2011. said, when that game went 3-1 and the game was done, and should have just shut up shop and said, do you know what, we've lost this game, uh, we'll lose 3-1 and we'll, we'll keep it there and we'll be disappointed rather than be humiliated because there's losing and then there's being humiliated and that's what Aston Villa are thinking about. While you've got a two-goal cushion, you can continue to push forward and try and get that goal back that gives you a gateway back into the game. Once you get three goals behind, the game's done and dusted. You may as well just uh, be compact and just stop there because teams, when they're 3-0 uh, or winning by three goals, are going to take their foot off the gas because at this stage of the season, they don't want to run the risk of injury. And if they sit tight and compact, they don't allow anything, you don't lose by any more than three because Aston Villa, you know, if they, they lose 6-1, 7-1 here, they lose all the confidence. You know, some of their hard work that they've achieved this season, it's been a great season for them, gets undone in, in one game. It's no disgrace to come to the Etihad, take the game to us, don't park the bus and lose 4-1. I respect that far more than a team coming to the Etihad, parking a bus and coming away with something. You know, football's all about football. You don't. Nobody wants to sit there and watch their team have 20% possession. They'll argue and say, we've come away with a point. You know, I understand when Sheffield United do it, but, you know, Arsenal, for example, did it at the weekend. They're sitting top right now. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> it's Jose. It's straight out of the book of Jose Mourinho. Is uh, Aston Villa pressing and winning the ball back and getting themselves a free kick as well? Uh, Matthew, you weren't far off at all. Went with three one, and uh, it's four one at the moment. Spot on. Done a really good effort there. I went with one nil. I'm miles away. Me. Nadir says Villa have had a few batterings, 5-1 against Newcastle, 4-0 against Spurs, 3-0 against Liverpool. They're too open, that's why. But, uh, you know, on the, on the other end of that, they've beaten Arsenal, they've beaten Manchester City, and they've still got to play Liverpool at Villa Park as well. Bar that result that they had against Spurs at Villa Park, Aston Villa have been very good. It's a different ball game playing Villa away from home. A different ball game. From memory, that's the only bad result I can recall them having this season at Villa Parks. Not an easy place to go to and do something at. And they sit fourth. You don't get fourth place after 30 games. For no reason. It's not a, a low points tally at the top of the table. It's a low points tally at the bottom. I think Aston Villa have done really well. Just this evening, City have been better. And it's it's been good. It's been really good for Manchester City. City need this. City need to build on this. We need to go to Crystal Palace on Saturday... We need to take the game to them and come away with a really good victory in three points as Aston Villa give the ball away in a really dangerous area and not the best of passes from Oscar Bob. Looking for Hilly and Alvarez. And Alvarez will be frustrated. He'll feel like he, he could have had a hat-trick in the first half. This could easily have been seven or eight for City if they were really clinical today. Clinical in the first half. Uh, sorry, clinical in the second half. Not so clinical in the first half. Here's Leon Bailey for Villa in the penalty area. Wants to get his shot away. Finds the pass. Shot does come in eventually. Blocked by City. <laughs> and it's all out of the magic. <laughs> the cross comes in from Villa. 
I like that. Um, also, Andy, keep yourself safe on your drive up to Helmsley, Kirk, uh, Kirkby Moorside, to York. Keep yourself safe on that drive. So, three minutes remaining. Uh, you feel like City are just going through the motions at the moment. As I said, I, I want to see City... Um, just, just think about goal difference. It'd be good just to get another goal. You know, it sends us one behind Liverpool on on goal difference, scoring five. When was the last time City scored five in a game? Kirby Moore signed. I apologise for my poor pronunciation. Where is that? I've not heard it before. I'm not too bad on my knowledge of where, where all the like the major cities and everything is. I'm not so bad in knowing places that I've I've been to or driven past or driven through, but uh, I've not heard of Kirby Moorside before. Is Jack Grealish just having a shot blocked by Villa? His City players are going through the motions. I reckon the referee's going to add very little on here. It's near Helmsley. You see, I'd love to know where Helmsley is. <laughs> hence the hence, hence the uh, the question from me. I don't know where uh, Kirby Moorside or Helmsley is. <laughs> is Jack Grealish? Ah, oh, it's a lovely square. I can Oscar Bob gets it wrong and Alvarez gets it wrong and he's rounding the keeper, gets it across and keeper makes a good save. Anthony says he reckons seven minutes added on. Try and get another. I reckon the referee will just. Uh, I reckon it'll be like two minutes. I don't think they'll be long. Oscar Bob just didn't get his shot right there. Matthew, it does sound like Yorkshire, doesn't it? I need to know where it is now. Let's have a look. Helmsley. Where is Helmsley? There's a Villa into the penalty area and good defending from Rico Lewis out for a corner to Villa. Uh, so it is, oh, it's, uh, right, okay, got my bearings. It's not a million miles away, it's in North Yorkshire Moors, it's uh, not a million miles away from um, Scarborough. Never, ever been along the A170, going from, uh, is that Fursk, Fr Frisk? My eyesight's terrible, yeah. Very nice. As a corner comes in and out for a goal kick. Get it wrong. There you go, North Yorkshire. Not too far off Pickering and Helmsley. I was trying to get my bearings. The North Yorkshire Moors. Uh, Scarborough's up by the coast. If you carry on uh, further up north of York, uh, takes you up towards... Uh, well, fair stretch, but takes you up towards uh, Middlesbrough, not uh, too far off the A1M1, which is where I've been on, which will explain why I've not been heard of it before, because all the motorway signs take you towards York uh, and then take you towards the north and uh, Newcastle way. And I've not uh, deviated away from up there. Uh, my dad will be more familiar. He loves Yorkshire. Me, I tend to just uh, stick to the big towns and cities. I tend to just watch either football, cricket and things. That's how I get around. <laughs> anyway, guys, we're 22 likes away from 100 likes. Any help towards that would be much appreciated. Do subscribe as well if you're new around here. And uh, do uh, go and check out today's video sponsor, Sofa Score. Links and details there in the description. Here is Jack Grealish. Pivots really well. Can he get a goal against his former team? He just plays a back heel looking for Alvarez. So it's four minutes added on. We're through two minutes. So two minutes left. 
And he says, Lancastrian spy up here. And that should be a goal. And it's not a goal for Sergio Gomez. It's the outside of the post. I think it takes a deflection, actually. And out for, I think, a corner to uh, Manchester City. No, no, it's not a corner. He makes full contact. There's no deflection. I thought it took a deflection. It's like slow motion. Probably should have scored there, Gomez. That should have been the fifth as Manchester City. But... Here we are. Uh, righty old guys, uh, do subscribe if you're new around here. Social media links are in the description uh, and also in the on the Yellow Banner 2. If you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Email also in the description on the Yellow Banner 2. If you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries, don't forget as well to leave a thumbs up. 22 likes away from 100 likes. Any help towards that would be great. Uh, also don't forget to leave your thoughts in the live chat whilst we're still live for another minute or so uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below if you're watching this after the stream and yeah uh, do go and check out today's video sponsor SofaScore as I said links and details there in the description I will roll my promo video at the end of the stream I am going to end the stream in about a minute's time when the full time whistle does go uh, I've got work I've still uh, tomorrow morning I've still got uh, my match review to do after the game as well and Considering it's been a quarter past eight, I hate quarter past eight kickoffs. Give me seven forty-five kickoffs any day of the week. Bit of an earlier finish, uh, so I just want to crack on with that and hopefully have everything sorted and uploaded for you guys. I normally say within the hour. I'm hoping uh, I'll be uh, as uh, Callum Chambers goes into the book. I'm hoping I'll have everything sorted by eleven p.m. BST. Dave said he's happy with it. I'm delighted with it. City are getting back to winning ways with a comprehensive victory, uh, thanks to a Phil Foden hat trick and also an opening goal from Rodri as well. Aston Villa getting their one goal today. Uh, through um, Duran uh, for the equaliser in the first half. Keith, thanks very much for your kind comment there. And there is the full-time whistle. Manchester City pick up a much-needed, very important three points. The back to winning ways, the unbeaten run continues. And we've got a huge game now on Saturday to prepare for against Crystal Palace away from home. Game's coming in thick and fast. City now have got Liverpool under pressure. Not expecting Sheffield United to do anything at Anfield. But, you know, plus three on our goal difference. If we can win all our games between now and the end of the season by three goals, we may just catch all that goal difference up. You never know. What was most important, though, is then three points uh, and push on from there. Uh, and uh, our match against Crystal Palace is up next. Um, on Saturday, which I'll be back with another live watch long for you guys to enjoy. So, uh, as I said, do go and check out today's video sponsor, SofaScore, and go roll the promo video, uh, and then I'll bid you a farewell, and I will see you guys on Saturday, after, well, very early afternoon. Thank you very much there to SofaScore for sponsoring today's live watch on. Do go and check them out. Links and details are in the description, in the live chat, and also on screen if you want to go and uh, check out uh, SofaScore through my QR code. And I'll see you guys all again on Saturday for the live watch long match against Crystal Palace. I will, of course, have my match review out uh, by 11pm, so I'll see you for that. Uh, so I've been JSGC. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well. Peace.